Aha, there we go. Now, let's try this again. Hey everybody, this is Lance the Lush with all types of technical difficulties. Wow. I never had this issue. And I can see now I'm finally on the air after all that after starting this hangout 10 minutes late. So now, I'm going to do this real fast. Let me see here. Do, 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 do. And it's one of those ones to where, what can you do? Now, today we're going to talk about some issues that came up last week. Now, just in case you're joining me live, excuse me, this is the clean ale I made. Now, because of my idiotic not bottling this properly, it came out flat, but it's still not that bad. So it's one of those ones to where, hey, I tried. I just screwed up. I just screwed up really, really bad. Now, the question is, so I'm back in the Hangout. Let me go back to the Hangout page real quick so let me see something real fast. I got all these multiple windows open. Why would I join it myself? That makes no sense. So that's what I'm saying here is like, I'm up now. So it's one of those ones to where... This is a mess. Oh, jeez. So, now we got this going. We're going to talk about the news from last week. Now, last week, this has been a big point of contention with a lot of people. People I've talked to, at least. At least here in town. They're talking about the whole thing about the independent craft brewer's seal. Craft brewer's seal. Now, I know they've been talking about it for a long time. I knew this going in. And it's one of those ones to where you had to see it coming. Now, according to the article, now I'm going to get put the link here in the description so everybody knows exactly what I'm looking at. So give me one moment here. Get to the right screen. Now, the article itself says, how do you know if the beer you buy is truly for a craft brewer? The Brewers Association Publishers of CraftBeer.com is launching an independent craft brewer seal, which will be a game changer in terms of transparency of the shelf. Okay. Like I just said, I knew they were going to be doing this for, they were going to do this for a long, long time. My very first thing I saw is one of those ones to where, well, Rod has joined me. Uh, Rod J. Beer Reviews now. I just can't figure out why I got no sound from him unless it's from his side, which I'm pretty sure that it is. So let me see something real fast here. Show and broadcast. There we go. Now the question is, kind of, why am I not getting any sound at all? Oh, there we are. You see me? You got me muted, man. <laughs> oh, that's what it was. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, you can see I'm a bloody mess tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what you've been drinking already, man. <laughs> I had exactly one beer. That's the sad part. <laughs> Probably because two, two brew pubs I wanted to go to was closed today. <laughs> How strong is that beer you're making, dog? <laughs> hey, it's only 5%, but I didn't bottle it properly because it was flat. <laughs> It's all part of the learning stage. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So what's but, uh, going on? I didn't mean to break up your article there. You were talking about like the Brewers Association. Yeah, I was meaning to ask you about that because I can't remember if I put that on your page or not. Yeah. I was just saying because um, they've been talking about that for years. And my big concern is I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know what you think about that. Um. Well, I mean – People already signing on to it. I think it was Sierra Nevada already signed on to it. A couple other places, but I don't know. I got I got issues with the Brewers Association, which I know what they're doing, and I know it's a good thing for the independent brewers. But it's the whole arbitrary type decision making they make on the Brewers Association that bothers me some. Um, 
they move numbers when they want to move numbers. Right now, they're at 25%, more than 25% ownership takes someone out of being a craft brewer. But what's going to say if that changes or not? It used to be 2 million barrels. Now it's 6 million barrels. They moved it so they can keep Sam Adams a part of it at one point. It's like a shadowy star chamber type group that nobody really knows about, and people just seem to follow them. So it's kind of interesting. I mean, like I said, I can, I can understand where they're going with it and try to say, hey, these are actually independent brewers, which are good. But at the same point, I question some of their things because even their thing with the labels that they did a few months ago, they're going to have people beat their competition, but they can't win an award, although they can still put their beers up. So they can basically win, but they can't use marketing that they want. It's kind of a weird type thing with those guys. Oh, gosh, what you're saying is like, because I was looking at the rule, the, the basic rules on the article. Yeah. I mean, like, and on some of the chats I've been, like, six million is a large flip of numbers. We, I remember having to be in a chat that Sam Adams is right at the line. Right. And there's actually quite a few of them right at the line or yeah. getting to the point. So I was thinking maybe, uh, I was going to say cut off a million. Yeah. So, I mean, they're at $6 million now. They were at $2 million. So, now will they come back, you know, a year or two from now? And they said, we're going to go to $8 million so they can keep Sam Adam as a part or some of these other ones that are growing because of stuff. So, you know, it's, it's just an interesting thing. It's one group that's got a, a lot of power in the brewing industry um, that kind of makes the decision. But at the same point, it's like who appointed these guys to say they're the best ones to make the decision or – or along those lines, too. I don't know if it was a consensus done years ago or how they actually formed. I never looked that far into it. But um, it's just kind of interesting, you know, and people just seem to follow with no thought about it. I, I like to question things and try to find out what's actually happening with stuff. Well, so do I. And that's what I was like. I was kind of perplexed, and I'm looking at this, and they make it – And well, I understand what they're trying to do, like I said, but like I said, I don't know if it's going to work. Now, what's yeah. really interesting about this is what when what Inbev said about it and the – in the one article I was reading from Beer Street Journal, I don't know if you saw this or not, the arrogance <laughs> that they some of these brewers had. Yeah, the high road. They said the high road, the high, the high end, the low road, or something. So yeah, some, but, of these, some of these guys are coming out slamming them. <laughs> yeah, that's like I'm thinking. It was actually it's called the high end. That's the yeah. name of the article. Yeah. I was reading this. I'm like, really? Wow. <laughs> that's one way to alienate a customer base. Yeah, it's getting ugly on some of the. Uh, the uh, craft war, so to speak, there. <laughs> but what were your thoughts on that, on how they responded? Okay, I understand from their standpoint, like the brewers they bought out. I mean, they're trying to make a living. I get that. They want to remain the quote-unquote craft, even though a lot of people, that's subjective now. Right. It was like, like what's one article that kind of made me mad? Where was it? Hold on. Okay. It was, I mean, okay, look, um, Garrett Wells over 10 barrels said. Yeah, I mean, and when he says, "Now he now he is correct in the first part," he said at the end of the day, yes. the beer does the talking. I totally agree with him about that. Yeah. However, when he said they have to, they have to have a little bottle. Someone told me that's what I have to buy because their bottles on six packs don't mean shit to me. Sorry, pal, that does mean shit to you. <laughs> right. I mean, I'm I'm trying to keep it clean, but this is a PG show, you know. <laughs> Well, you see, you know my shows ain't always PG, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I want to keep it real, but come on. My reviews, my reviews are PG, but we go live, anything can happen. We might oh, yeah, I definitely know it. that. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was like, that's one of the two of the main things I wanted to talk about. And a lot of it is, I don't know if you've seen any of my videos. I was trying to give you explanations where the world I've been, you know? Yeah. And it's one of those ones to where I've been so busy with number one work, work all of a sudden, I work off working 30 hours or 65 hours. Nobody see me. I haven't done a review. People wonder where I'm at. It's like I got shows and events to go to. I can't do that. So it's like, ugh. But what's going on down your world down in Cincinnati? Oh man, what is going on down here? Um, let me get up. So I was just typing something up there real quick. Um, just pretty much drinking beer. Like right now, just drinking beer. I'm actually rolling, rolling like back in the day right now at the uh, 72 Imperial, you know, the uh, from Breckenridge. So it's a cream stout. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I ended up picking up a good deal on those. Ended up going to a place 
I don't know if you ever see my post, but I get some good deals at some of the places down here. Yeah, I saw some of the videos you were at the stores. Like, that's, that's like, a, that's like a place to go down there in the greater Cincinnati area. Yeah, I got a case of Upland. Well, was, I split the case. 12-pack of Upland and the 12-pack of East Breckenridge. Um, $12.99 for the case. So kind of going through these right now. My fridge is stocked nicely, so... I just got to decide how I'm going to drink all these beers so I can get the reviews done. Well, like, do like I do sometimes. Like, sometimes, like, I just do it on a Friday, just sit down, I'm doing a bunch of reviews. I just do them right. all at once. I'm just I'm stationary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing is getting them all done. They can get them all uploaded and between putting the stuff on YouTube. And I've got the blog, so I'm putting stuff on the blog. And then I've got stuff on, um, other social media aspects, Instagram, Pinterest, Google Plus, all that. Before you know it, it's like the time you get home from your day job and you do some of this, it's time to go to bed and you're back up working again. So, oh, that's, that's what I try to explain to people too. Is like, this is actually a job unto itself. Right. <laughs> I mean, just on, like for me, because only because I don't do many review, reviews that you do. I mean, I only do it once a week for the most part. That's re- even one doing it one day is researching to itself, just yeah. trying to figure out what I'm trying, which one I want to do. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I, I try to usually get one done and uploaded per day, uh, which I keep a bank. I need my bank right now. I got like ten or eleven that are already queued up. Um, but just even get one in a day to sit there and do the review. And doing the beer and the review isn't as bad, but we got to go back and. Do the video. I kind of got down to the style I like now, so I usually try to keep them under like five minutes if possible. And I've kind of gotten it down to what I want to say about beers and got the editing down the way I like it and everything. So it's a little more easier now. It's like when you first start brewing, the first time you brew, it's like you got stuff all over the place. But after a few times, you got your system down, and you're just like bam, 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 bam. Oh, let me go check out the game real quick, and you're back. You got everything rolling, so you're in the zone. So. I feel yeah. like I've kind of got there finally on some of the video type stuff. Okay, that's the one thing I was going to ask you about that. Since I got you got you here live, so the people can listen in, I was yeah. going to ask you about far as the reviews. Now, most of the bulk of my reviews, I use a green screen. Obviously, I'm sitting right right in front of them. Yeah. So for me, it takes a long time to produce for that reason. Mm-hmm. But in our reviews, I don't use it at all. Right. So a lot of people have to understand. Everybody has their own style, how they want to do it. Right. And I was explaining to people, there's only there's only two. There's only two reviewers out there that actually uses a green screen, right? And that's me and um, Tid, well, Taste Tour. But I can't take those kids seriously half the damn time, you know. <laughs> I mean, you get reviews. Don't get me wrong, but I just can't take them seriously. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that being said, this is one of those ones where, like, if you if folks out there want to do something like this, right? Pick your own style, like you did. Like, I like your background. Well, you oh, why you got set up? Yeah, it, it took it. It took some time to build it up on what I put up there. So, um, you know, if you go back, you look at my first video, and you look at where I'm at now. You over a period of time, you can see where I'm gradually adding stuff up there on the wall. So I kind of got the chance to grow it over that period, which is nice. Um, but I go out to like antique spots, and I go out to estate spots sometimes they catch some of these deals on stuff some of the stores like my great lakes up by up in your part of the state i got that actually for free at one of the liquor stores i was getting beer and saw the sign there and asked if they were selling that if that was for sale and they were like no nah. they checked it. like i don't know it looks like it's not do you want it or whatever i'm like well if you guys don't want it go ahead and hook it up and that's a nice little you know felt type sign right there so oh, there you go especially when it's free yeah yeah, see, I watch American Pickers too, so I got oh, okay. no problem. I kind of like I'm gonna ask these people if they want to get rid of something. And you're like, you'll find out. People say, oh yeah, go ahead, take it or whatever, or cut a deal on a Sierra Nevada sign. I actually got that up in uh, that was up in Hamilton, Ohio. I went into an antique store. They were trying to sell it, I think, for like twenty five. Got it for twenty from the guy from the store. So nice Sierra Nevada mirror. So that works out nicely. Um, some of the stuff I kept. I hang out with some of the distributors. I make contacts with. So some of the distributors actually provided some of the stuff on the wall. So, you know, as you're doing your reviews and you're talking to guys, see what they got, make some connections with the distributors for these distribution companies. Cause we got a ton through Ohio and some of the like breweries and stuff. And they're always rotating stuff out, especially some of the stores, you know, they'll give you some of that stuff, but it's just like gradually over a period of time, 
plus working at beer festivals like I do, that actually helps a lot to make a lot of the contacts I make. Well, that, that's the well, that's the one thing I was figuring. Since you do a lot more festivals than I do, that's mm -hmm. probably helped a ton. Yeah, oh yeah, I mean, it's now it's like I go in, I know guys that are there. Like when I went to uh, the last one we just did in the spring for the Cincy Beer Fest, where we got over five hundred beers, like five hundred beers. You can't even get through them all. Uh, Lagunitas came down. I already know some of the Lagunitas crew. It's like, hey, what's up, man? And blah, blah, blah. And we're just like started kicking it and everything. But it's like I made these contacts with different uh, breweries over the period of time, which is nice. And then it's just like when you come down, it's like you're hanging out with your boys early. So. Yeah, I noticed that too. It's like some of the, the couple of the um, the big events I do down up here in Akron, of something you don't know, is, um, is Rubber City Beer Fest. I know everybody there. Mm -hmm. And the Hamburger Festival. Because a lot of your brewers show up for that. I okay. met a lot of people there. I just hang out all day. Okay, 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 that's a, okay, that's a blatant lie. They, they could be the work and sell for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you definitely do some work there and everything. But it's like we had a beer festival last October, and we had enough people in our station. It was kind of like we could just chill. And our, at our beer fest, you get to drink for free and everything too. So you don't have to wait in line because you're a volunteer. You got the shirt on. You got the wristbands. Walk up and get the beer you want to get. And I was just hanging out with guys I do with stuff. And, like, you know, we're hanging out, drinking all kinds of beers. My boys from Lagunitas, they gave me a couple bottles that I Westified Stout to take home so I could do a review on that. Um, I ended up hooking up one before that one with one of the guys from uh, the shoots. We were doing a bottle share, and they had Black Beat 23. They weren't putting it out for the crowd, but the guy had some in the, in the, uh, the truck. So we were back there doing, like, Black Beat 23, just doing a bottle share, which is – they're up to 27 now, but the 23 was really good when we had that there. So, oh, okay. But yeah, but you know, and, and it's, you just go, it's, you go out there and you have fun. I do interviews when I'm out there with people. I just have like, I got a guy here that I work with that's a friend. He usually pops up. He'll bring his camcorder. He'll shoot video if I want him to shoot video, or I'll use my phone to record um, some quick stuff. I've interviewed people that work at the feds. I've interviewed people that have brewed with the companies, you know, just pop up stuff. And we, I interviewed, uh, I don't know if you get uh, Little Fish up where you're at. Oh, I see it from time to time. I've had it. I've had it at the festival. We rarely see it here in Akron. Okay, because they're like in between us. They're kind of right up there. Um, I want to say like east of Columbus, um, but they actually have a nice little brewery, and we did a thing there. That's actually where Dave Chappelle actually lives in that town where Little Fish is. Oh, okay. Uh, um, and uh, you know, you just do these different things, and you meet these people, and you just have fun with it. So. You know, just having a blast. It's oh, a okay. Hobby. It's a fun hobby. Oh, yes, it's very – It's a. <laughs> you know, when I first got in this a few years ago, and it's like – I just said it as a one-off joke, and I've talked about this. I've had so much fun. and met so many people since I've started. Right. Just online. Right. Not necessarily, like, out and about. It's like, like I go – like, I go from around town. There's actually people starting to recognize me. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, you know? <laughs> no, that's a good thing if people are recognizing you. You know, you're, you're building up that name. You're building up that brand. And people are, you know, paying attention and actually, you know, hanging out and say, hey, I want to know this guy. This guy knows some stuff about beer. So that's good. That's good for you. Well, that's the thing. Is like, like okay, to, to put this in perspective, my the, my local bar I go to, mm. I mean, this, this, this crowd is 40-plus, right? Right. They want nothing to do with craft beer. I mean, they're, they're Miller butt all day long. <laughs> Miller's a bestseller, and I respect that, right? Right. When it comes to me, this is about a month ago, one of the distributors here pitched him about selling Goose Island, a Rhine guys. And I told him, look, if you want to start selling that, the way your bar is set up, it's going to take a very long time to bring that type of crowd in because they're not known for it. Right. And it's like, I mean, more of the, the distributor's kind of dumped it on them, so he's kind of stuck and it don't sell. The flip side is when a regular comes in, and they and since they already know I do the reviews, they'll start asking me questions about it. So I do feel good about that. Right, right. You know, I'm kind of mad at Ryan Geist right now, but that's a different story for a different day. <laughs> what are you mad at Ryan Geist for? <laughs> that's my neck of the woods, man. Why you mad? Why you beef with my brewery? <laughs> okay. They make a really good brew. I never question that, right? Right. I think, personally, they overproduced. That's just me. Overproduced, like, too many styles out there? No, 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 no. no. Or too, just... too much product, period. Well, I mean, if, if they're overproducing, they're going to see that in their bottom line because they're going to be able to move it all. 
but they're actually crossing them to more states now, so they are able to move that beer out there. Okay, I'll give an example. Okay, a perfect example. I don't know if you heard me talk about this. Mm -hmm. Circle K Great Lakes. I was in Youngstown. It was about two months ago. I saw okay. him, I, I walked walk down the cooler. I saw on the shelf. So I thought it was just one of those one offs, right? Right. So I get back into town. I go to three different Circle K just to make sure I wasn't losing my mind. And it was on the shelf. That particular beer has no business in a gas in a gas station like that. And in then, Great, Great Lakes? No, no, Ryan Guys. Ryan Guys is in the gas station there. Okay. But I uh, see down here, our gas station is one of our best beer spots is a gas station. So we have a spot okay. down here where it's like a shell station. And we have one that's a BP. And both are known for their beer. Because we have like growlers in our stations and our, some of our gas stations down here. Oh, okay. I can't speak. Well, so that's like down that way, I'm not totally sure. But like up here. Up there is not good. No, craft beer in a gas station. I mean, there's there's a few of them here in Akron yeah. that specifically deals in that. Yeah. But there's one of those ones when it's in a regular Circle K. And the Circle K down the street from my apartment. I mean, yeah. it's bad. I mean, it's ghetto, ghetto, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I see it on the shelf, and they were telling me, because I know the manager there, yeah. she tells me it doesn't move at all. They were spending 89 cents on an ice house. <laughs> well, you got to be, it's location, location, location. You got to be in the right spot for sure. Um, I mean, where I'm at here, I actually live on the Kentucky side even though I'm part of the Cincinnati area. And we have some gas stations where I'm in my town where it's more, probably about 70% macro drinkers out here. And our gas stations have craft beer, but they're able to move the craft beer. We actually just had a new liquor store open up a few months ago and they got a ton of craft beer. It's It, it could take a warming up over a period of time. Um, and then people start to kind of hear about it or to try it a little bit more. Who really knows? I mean... You got to try different areas, and if it doesn't work, that store's not going to buy any more from them, and they're going to be able not able to move any more product up that way. Well, that's the whole thing. Like here in Akron, yeah. it's like it's it's a far as retail stuff, it's a dead zone. Yeah, I mean the only two big we have three stores that really carries it. We got um we have Cork and Brew, which is down the street from my apartment. Their buildings they just can't carry because their building's too small. We got um Lizardville. Mm -hmm. And we got um, wine barrel. That's it. That's we got three big stores. That's it. Right. And it, and it sucks, you know. Yeah, yeah. But you guys are still trying to build it out up there for the most part. So. Okay, now for people that um that don't know, far as like Cleveland is pretty much built out, but they're forty miles away. Right. Down here, we're in the process of building out. Right. Even though it's really concentrated in two parts of town. But I mean that happens. Now, as far as like down, you're down since you're down there in um, Cincinnati, Cincinnati. Cincinnati yeah. Covington. I don't know how concentrated it is. Oh, I we don't. don't. I mean, yeah, because I mean down here we've got like forty breweries. Forty? Yeah, we're huge. Um, that, that's just on the Ohio side of the river, or both sides? Uh, that's that's both sides. But I mean, on the Northern Kentucky side, you know, we got. Braxton, and we used to have eight ball. They ended up closing, but Braxton opened, took their spot as a second brewery. We got Darkness. Uh, we've got uh, Wooden Cask. Um, probably gonna get out of that 40, probably about seven or eight are right here in Northern Kentucky. The rest are on the Cincinnati side. And then we even got more when you count like Indiana has one and Lawrenceburg. That's right in the corner of where we're at. So they got one called Crescent. Um, and then we have some up towards outside the Cincinnati area. And then when you go east to west, and then when you go south, you go Lexington and Louisville, they got theirs out there. So all these are funneling in, like against the grain and country boy and all that stuff. We get all that, that we get stuff from Dayton that comes down as well, like Warp Wing out of Dayton and stuff. So, I mean, even though we've got close to 40 here, we got like, if you, if you did the whole two hour radius driving time all around, we're probably around 60 or so, 60, 65 probably. Wow, so basically in a two hour drive from where you're at, I'm, I'm starting to think in my, top of my head, I mean, if you go on the Ohio side, you're only out to Athens. Yeah. And, and technically if you go Athens, south, you're down to Memphis. Athens, at Athens, we got Jackie O's. They get down yeah. here, so they're kicking out good beer. Yeah, we rarely see Akron Jackie O's up here. Yeah. At least in Akron, we don't. You know, yeah. we do get it from time to time. Yeah. And then in Columbus, we've got um, like 450, um, I think it's, no, it's uh, North High is up there. Um, <laughs> in Indiana, we got 450, I think it's 450 North in Indiana we got here. They actually did the one that's kind of the Fruity Pebbles 
uh, type beer that I tried to get and it sold out within like three or four hours of the liquor store we had it at. Uh, uh, fruity, okay, a fruity pebbles yeah. is like that um that <clears throat> that loopy vodka. It's like a, I don't I mean it's it's a beer, but it tastes like supposed to taste kind of like the fruity pebbles cereal, um, and it's called fruity. I want to say like a fruity stone or something like that. They, they got they got another name for it besides pebbles because of the trademark thing. But they had it down here. People found out on Facebook and it was posted and it was sold out in like three to four hours. It was out of oh. down the store. Okay, since like, since you brought something like that up, I'm gonna ask you because I can't get an honest answer. <laughs> <laughs> no and honest answer. <laughs> and and I want somebody to shoot me straight on this question. All right. Do you think that brewers, and I understand they're trying to they're trying new ideas. Is some of this getting out of control and what they're trying? Some of it getting out of control. Um, I saw a beer that they were developing overseas using women's vaginal yeast. So actually, yeah. you know what? Actually, two that, brewers are doing that. There's one in I think there's one in Europe, and there's a place in Denver that's doing that. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> so yeah, I would say that's getting a little bit out of control. <laughs> like, like an example, yesterday I don't know if you saw me post this. Yeah, somebody developed a beer that tastes like ramen. What? Like, yeah, I would have saw me post that. <laughs> and it's one of those ones to where it's like, okay, I drink, okay, not drink ramen. I eat ramen, even though I can't stand the salt content. But right. no, just no, you know. Oh. Yeah, there's a, there's some stuff. I saw some stuff they're doing like whales type stuff out there before. Um, I had one from Dogfish Head, which I actually thought, no, I'm sorry, it was Flying Dog. It was, um, <laughs> it was Pearl Necklace is the name of it. Um, and it was actually, they use oysters in it. It actually wasn't bad at all. Um, but people are trying different things. Heineken actually just discovered a new yeast strain earlier this year. They released a beer in France already. It's coming to the U.S. next year. It's going to be H41, and that's going to be a new strain of yeast they located. So there's stuff out there. People are developing new hops, like in labs and everything like that. It's almost like the weed industry. They're developing these different new things that take place. So we've covered a lot. There's probably still more room to go, but I think sometimes you question some of the stuff people are putting together. Like, do we really want a beer to be like that or not? But – People's palates will dictate it. If people start liking it, they'll drink it. They'll keep making it. Well, my whole thing is, like, I think it's more shock value while they're doing it. Yeah. But it's, I understand they want to build a niche, so it's kind of that, it's like, I can't, I can grasp it, but I can't pick which way it's going to go. I really right. can't. Now, um, moving on. The second question I was going to ask, and I, I actually po I actually proposed this question before in chats on on um Hangouts. Mm -hmm. Do you really think that we have an oversaturation problem? You think we we do already? No, are we? Are we, are we do? Or are we on that? Or are we that point now? As a be as a as a totality of beer, I would say no. As a, as a look at some styles, I would say yes. Like, I don't know how much more IPAs we really need to do. Um, it's kind of nice mixing it up if you got something to mix it up with. Like, for instance, one of my favorite IPAs that came out last year, I got one left I'm going to do a review on at some point here. It's a Stone Mocha IPA that I just had picked up seasonal. Um, I like stouts. I like IPAs. They were able to come to put together one that basically shows a stout and IPA qualities. That's something a little bit different. But for your standard IPAs, a lot of them are just decaying, and it's getting to a point now where you have some of them, it's kind of like they're more, in my opinion, kind of half-assed about it because they're too, like, over tangerine where they almost taste like medicine. Um, oh, I see what you're saying. I've yeah. had that issue myself. Yeah, so I think there's oversaturation on some areas. Like, that IPAs, possibly in some of the sour type areas um but when you look at other brewers that are coming out with things like keller beers or swartz beers some of these old school styles some of the uh the gozas that are coming out i think we definitely got more room to expand there um so it's just a matter of people need to try to get more stuff what i'd like to see i, I like breweries that actually are kind of key focused in something i think it makes them stand out better for instance like Rhinegeist is really more of an IPA brewer than anything else. 
somehow they came up with the Panther, which is actually a pretty good porter, but most of their key beers are mostly IPAs. Um, and when people get other beers that aren't IPAs, they still kind of get that bitterness out of it because they're more of an IPA shop. One of our other breweries here, Urban Artifact, they're more sour and wild beers. They do that exceptionally well, and they stand out, and they kind of work right in that niche very nicely. Um, so it's a matter of don't copy and try to be somebody else. One of our other brews I went to last week called Blank Slate, they actually have their philosophy. If they don't want to copy anybody else, so everything starts blank for them or where they want to go, where they see opportunities. And it works out. They put out great beers, and it works great with how they're doing it. Um, but we don't need, like, any more of these copycat-type things coming out. I mean, after a point, you're not really tasting anything different than some of the other ones. You can, you can have an overkill. If you went to the store and you saw – all IPAs, you'd be like, well, I might as well just grab one or there's like no adventure in it. Like, so stores are going to stock based on demand. I like to see them stock more styles. Like they usually have a good amount of IPAs, a good amount of stouts. If, if it's that time of year, some keep them year round, but most of the time in the fall winter, you'll see more. You'll see now some more wheat L's and some more gauchos, things along those lines. Um, they just got to make sure they keep a balance in there. And I, I wish that, more bars would do that as well. Like bars are horrible. Like a lot of them don't know how to stock their bars properly for the right beers to have. So they'll have like four or five adjuncts, you know, your big macros, but they'll have like maybe three or four IPAs, maybe a stout, but they don't have like a porter. They don't have a weed ale. And it's like, dude, you got like three or four IPAs. You said two, maybe at the most, and then put other stuff on there as well to get each have like a brain of like seven different styles of beers. That way anybody comes in, they can find something that they can actually enjoy. Well, that's that's, what yeah. that seems you're saying is like now the IPA craze, I hope is dying down because yeah. you know, what those I do, there's a, you just said there's enough bad. I, okay, let me, let me back it up. There's enough marginal IPAs out there. Yeah. When you have a, when you start to get a mountain that you're starting to realize how many there are out there that are kind of tipping that line, it's like, okay, we may have jumped the shark a little bit in this type of area, possibly. So yeah, if you're like, going to make it, you got to make it stand out. you got to give it some type of pop, you know. And that's the thing is, like, I've said this and gotten blasted for it. There's so many IPAs out there. They're just making these beers just cover mistakes. Yeah. And I catch something like that immediately. Yeah, yeah. And I've had some that say they're IPAs that I go to drink, and it's like, this isn't the IPA. You know, um, you've had enough beers that you know how to review and taste different beers. It'll be like, this is more like a strong ale, or this is more like this. This isn't, we you know, what it's just said it's going to be. Um, and that's why I think that some of the brewers putting stuff out there aren't really always putting the best stuff out there either. I mean, they're in their mind, they're putting out maybe the best stuff, but it's like it's just so competitive of a field out there. It's kind of like you get lost in a shuffle. You know. Okay, yeah, and it's like yeah. the other thing I was gonna say is like far as like too many, is like yeah. the bar I go to the owner, me and him was talking one day, yeah, and he's getting hammered right now. Yeah. <laughs> for all the for all the places opening up. Yeah. I mean he can't hang and it's like I don't like saying this, but I'm gonna say it. Are we starting to see the beginning of the end of the traditional corner bar? Oh, Oh. I mean, I mean, that's a very loaded question. I mean, yeah, I mean, they're still out there. It's kind of like, like macro is never going to go away. Wait, 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 Rob, hold up. Oh, I'm going to step away for one minute. And st okay. Sit on that question. We'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> well, Lance is going to step away here. It's his show. So I'm going to drink a beer. And uh, wait for him to come back to give him the answer. But if anybody's out there with questions, feel free to comment on the live chat board, too. Okay, I'm back. Somebody, I thought somebody was knocking on my door. Okay. <laughs> now, back to the question. I mean, what do you think? About the corner bar? I mean, I think you're always going to have the corner bar just because it's like a part of a neighborhood to have those nowadays. And you're always going to have your like macro type drinkers. So, like you mentioned, the other crowd, there's always going to be those guys that want to go down there and just get like a Bud or a Coors or a Miller or, you know, a Mickey's, whatever it may be. And so for a corner bar, those are inexpensive beers they can actually use to stock them. You're not going to get kind of the hipster or craft beer kind of person possibly in some of those. Um, 
so I think there's always going to be that. The question will be more some of the other bars, like the craft beer type bars, how long they will actually sustain because as attitudes shift and everything, you've got so many that are popping up. Do you have something that is going to keep people coming there? I watch Bar Rescue a lot. I just watch some of the different bars that they go in there. And it's kind of like, you know, one of the things they say, you have to change your concept every three to four years now as a bar owner to stay up with times on stuff because people will change fickly on their attitudes and move to different type of areas. A corner bar doesn't really ever have to change it because that's like part of your community. If you went down to, you know, John's Tavern, you know what John's Tavern is always going to be like, you know? So it's kind of like becomes part of the community at some point. Oh, I see what you're saying. This is one of those ones where just talking about my local bar that I go to, and plus talk to the other owners, I'm there, there's a great concern. There really is. Yeah. And then they, they know the way they're set up, they can't switch to that. But the flip side, like you're saying, is how can they survive? Is like, like um, I'll give you a perfect example. Ron Shay is one is a big name down here as far as a craft as a craft brewer and a brew club. Mm-hmm. He was telling me this is about a year ago. And he ran, he getting ready to expand out to, so he can can stuff and sell it. He was telling me is that the best thing to do is to stay small as long as you can, only because you don't want to overexpand. Then you're just making stuff to make stuff. Right. Keep it, keep it simple, and if you want to experiment, make it into small batches. That's what he told me. Now I believe yeah. that. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I mentioned, like 8-Ball was one of our breweries that just closed, but Braxton took over their spot. Braxton took over the spot where 8-Ball was, actually hired all, all their employees on to work with them, but they're using it for small batch processing. And so what they're going to do out of there is make things in smaller batches. So they can test stuff out. If things get a pretty good follow, like we talked about, you know, people are overextended with IPAs. If they have stuff that actually makes that great of a buzz, they can put it in the other plant and make more of it out there. But that small batch process, it helps them to not overextend too much. And that's what we see with other breweries here, like Mad Tree, even Ryan Geist. There's only certain things they'll make actually in-house to see how the demand of stuff is. As they get things with a good popular run behind it, then they can say, well, let's go ahead and start putting it in cans and get out to the marketplace. Oh, okay. So, so, yeah, small batch is definitely the way to go. So you can test things out there. Not, you know, we're going to make this new, you know, boysenberry weed ale. We'll put it out there. You find nobody buys it, and you're screwed because you put so much out in the marketplace. Oh, okay. So it's like it's not only situations like, um, like Christmas ales or pumpkin ales. Yeah. Oh my you god. Know, they're, 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 they're so everywhere. And this is about that time of year they start popping. The last up. two years have been like the worst for pumpkin beers. And I was telling somebody earlier this week, we're probably about a month away from seeing them start to pop up now. Because what happens is, and we were talking about this last year, there's such a run on pumpkin beer that now companies are trying to be the first one out there. So they're getting them all out there because they know there's going to be a drop-off like around October. But people are going to get tired of it. They don't want to be the one holding the bag. It's like they're playing musical chairs. They do not want to be the one without a seat. So now we get them all early, way too early, because like in the middle of August, like it doesn't even seem right to have a pumpkin beer. No, and, people, it do- and it doesn't. So, yeah, and... But they don't want to wait till later. So it kind of, and like like up there, the place I mentioned, the last two years, they have pumpkin beer sitting around. They had to sell beer out at a case for like $5.99, a case wow. of beer, just so they can get something back on the money they have put into it. Because wow. it gets to be over two months. And, I, and, they, and then last year, they cut down from what it was the previous year. I don't even know how much they're going to take in this year because they're seeing a decline drop off of those because you do get burned out on a lot of them. Unless you're something special that you've built up because you put such a high quality into it. Like you look at something like Southern tier, you look at their pumpkin or you look at their warlock. They're such a good craftsmanship in those beers that people look forward to trying those. So other beers that are coming out just as a pumpkin beer that might be not as great. People are going to pass on them because they're going to want to get the other ones when they come out. So you got to be, you gotta be able to let the beer speak for yourself, you know? I understand that, especially with pumpkin beers. I know we're kind of on the side subject. Like, yeah. let me see some Oktoberfest first, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> we, have, <laughs> we get the pumpkin beers before we get into fest beers and the uh, Mars and beers. I, that's not right. <laughs> yeah, it's like, there's, there's an actual, there's an order you got to go in, you know? I'm surprised there's not a turkey beer yet. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I did, I did see a blurt about that last year. I didn't really look into it. I didn't want to look. Yeah. 
we fermented with cranberries and turkey this year for a beer. Uh, <laughs> you don't make me look at it and we go off the chat. <laughs> uh, uh, and throwing everything else in the beer, so yeah, why not, right? Yeah, yeah but uh, moving on. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. okay. Now, you know that um, I started homebrewing. You know this. Right, right. A lot of people know this. Now, okay, if you watch, okay, for people maybe watching this on the replay, go back and watch my homebrewing journey and see what I did on that very first one. Now, right now, I got I got people wanting stuff from me already. Yeah. The, the moment I made that announcement, I, I had three phone calls in 10 minutes for orders. Yeah. I didn't, number one, I didn't think I'd get that that fast. Yeah. Number two, I told people, if you back watch that video, you get a good idea how big my apartment is. I'm guy live on the cheap. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, and I actually floated last week to partial mash and I couldn't do it. Yeah. Now, a lot of the homebrewing groups have been helping me. Mm hmm. Now, um, you homebrew. Right. So I'm gonna pick your brain a little bit in this in this in this segment. Now, so you know, I started like everybody else for the most part. I started with extract out of a kit. Right. Like everybody else. Right. Now what I did was and God, I should have did the video, I didn't do it. I changed it around a little bit this time. Okay. Okay. I had my first cream ale, which like those the last two bottles I just drunk was the last my bottles, everything else was a birthday present. Now what I did with this time, I um, I swapped some stuff out. So what I did was, I swapped the I swapped the hops uh, swapped the hops out. Okay. Instead of when using what they were using, I went out and got them. You would have got different hops. Yeah. Okay. Now what I did was, because I have beer sniff, so so anybody know don't know what that is, is actually. I wouldn't call it a recipe app. I call it more as a guide. Okay. What you want to do. I know that's a weird way of explaining it. That's how I explain it to people. Right. It's like an outline. Yeah, give me an outline what I want to do. Now the one hop is totally unavailable anymore. It's like that was that was summer size. I already knew that was a that was a gamble getting that. And I wasn't I wasn't paying for a 10 pound bag. So right. it was <laughs> there was no, I wasn't making I wasn't making a cream ale all year long. Um, right. So two hops I got, I ch I chose those. Now it's fermenting now, so I'm gonna assume it's gonna be all right when I when I go do the gravity test on next Saturday on next Saturday night. Right now, um, you as a home brewer, and I've talked to other home brewers about this. What do you suggest? Now, now I will say this: a brewmaster told me this up in Cleveland. Okay. He told me that if you want to get into this, if you're going to make a, an X style, always make three batches. That's what he told me. And because the way I'm doing it, he says, use the kids to control batch. The second right. batch, do the hybrid. The third batch, experiment. That's what he told me. I wanted to run that by you. Um, that's a way you can actually do it that way. Um you're not in a situation where you can kind of relate back to what it's supposed to be and to see what the situation is or what you actually made. Um, so it's a good relate back to it. One thing I was going to say, I was, I was thinking in my head because one site that might be good for you is actually Brew Toad. Brew Toad. Never heard of that one. Yeah, that's a site where you can actually create and discover homebrew recipes so you can track your stuff on there. Oh, okay. So it's a great spot online to be able to do that. Um, I had a friend at, who also homebrews that we did that as well. And there's actually another one um, where it's a hot chart. And let's see if I can find the, the one for this. I believe it's BYO.com. I think I've been on that one. And they actually measure out the hot for you for whatever size you're wearing, whatever you're making. Is that the right thing? That's a different one, I think, actually. That just gives you the type of hops. I got. I keep a folder on everything here on my computer that has everything. It might have been alcoholprofessor.com. might have been the site. I got so many different beer sites on here. Yeah, I was on BYO Saturday night. 
Okay. I, 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 I got a good idea what they're all about. But um, I think if you were trying to actually work towards, if you wanted to have that, I mean, there's more steps involved that way. With the way that I actually brew, I'm a, I say a little bit different, but I started out at, at the Mr. Beer Kit, and I actually still use the kit to actually hold the beer when I make it, but I make two and a half gallon batches because it's just me in the house, so I can make a two and a half gallon batch or just over two and a half to fit the container, and I'll oh, get a okay. case of beer, I'll get a case of beer out of it. Um, but I also, I, I always like to cook in the past, right? So the recipes they had there were kind of not, not as exciting to me. So I always like spice them up. The one book that I read before I got into brewing now, which is a book that I always suggest everybody reads that wants to, that, that wants to try to brew and you can probably get it even at your library. It's the joy of home brewing. No, I've so, seen that book. That book's yeah. been recommended to me quite a few yeah, times. Yeah, it's definitely. I, and I ended up picking up a copy of my library and reading it here. But I made notes and stuff out of it, but it really gives you a nice breakdown and everything. So when I went in to start doing my first batch, and knock on wood, I've never actually had a bad batch. Um, I've never come across making it. I mean, I, I got everything sanitized the way it was supposed to go. I kind of knew how I was supposed to work the extracts and everything. And I'm very precise when it gets to, like, cooking or anyway. So when I came to making beer, I was kind of really precise on how things had to go. Know when to put stuff in for your bittering for the beer. Know when to put stuff in when you want it for that aroma, like in the dry hopping or towards that last 10 minutes of the boil. And I've probably made, like, I think 12 different batches of stuff. Um, and you, I just have fun. And I, and I fermented with serrano peppers. I fermented with blackberries. Um, I've done stuff like I've made, like, a peanut butter type porter before which people at work love that. They asked me to still make that again to bring in because the ones that had it want to get it again. Um, and you go out there and you just have fun with it. But the big thing is know what you need to do. I had a couple guys I tried to teach them how to do it, but they, they would miss certain steps, you know, knowing how much the uh, ABV is, get to make sure you get the reading in the beginning and the end so you know what your ABV is, know what your temperatures are, where you're storing it, all that stuff comes into play. And missing any of these steps can affect your beard a certain way. So... I think the best way, like I said, look at that book. If you happen to get it, um, that lays out a lot of the guideline there. But I always tell people, if you can boil water, you can make beer. You have to follow the right steps and everything. Well, that's what I was figuring at first. I was like, like far as boiling water to make beer. But that was to me, that was very oversimplistic. And I'll, I'll be the first person yeah. to admit, when I made my very first beer, I had to take my – brewing hat off and put my cooking hat on because the one thing I did notice with mm -hmm. a lot of home brewers, they're really good cooks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you could throw down in the kitchen and stuff, you can get into the brewing. And you start spraying with different stuff. But one thing I would say that was probably a big key for me that I learned by being able to like read the book ahead of time, when you're dealing with like, some of the kit type stuff, the extract brewing, some of those extracts have really been around a, a good period of time, possibly the store, because some of them may not be dated. You want to get grains and get them into one of the sacks so you can steep them before you add extract into it. When you steep the grains, it actually will add more flavor and bring back to life the extract. Oh, so that's just saying, okay. Yeah, so just in case the extract has been sitting around a little bit longer, steeping grains in there before you do everything with the wort to get everything all in there, that's going to add more flavor back into it. So... That's kind of a big thing. And it's basically you're tying them off, you're putting them in there, you're doing like just basically like an iced tea, or I'm sorry, a hot tea, where you're pulling it up and down, you're making sure all this, everything runs out of the grains so it can be fermented into it. And like I said, it adds another layer of freshness. Well, that's my whole thing. It's like I know sooner or later I'm going to have to wean myself off of, off of the off the kits, even though I'm using it as a control batch. Yeah. I know this going in. I mean, so a, lot of people, a lot of people just stick with the extract, bro. And if you're making a good beer as an extract, there's like no thing where you have to go to the all grain. A lot of people will if they're going to set up that way. Like I don't have a need to make a five gallon bucket, so for me going all grain right now is not something that I would look at. But um, you know, if you want to go that deep, then yeah. But you know, you're working your way up. I, I read an article last year, and they were talking about two of the guys. I know the one guy up in um, Toledo that runs Black Frog Brewery. He started with a Mister Beer Kit. Now he runs Black Frog Brewery up there. There was another guy that was out west. I don't think it was 
it was somebody that was big. It was kind of like a stone type uh, brewery out there, but it wasn't a stone. It was another top brewery, but he started out with a Mr. Beer kit, you know? So a lot of people start their way off the kits and work their way up and then go to the next level with it. Well, far as it's Mr. all chemistry. So it gets to a point where you're just knowing how to match up everything. If you size, you're upscaling. Well, the thing is like, like I'll be the first person to admit when I first started home brewing, I looked at a Mr. Mr. Beer, Mr. Yeah. Beer kit. And I, I knew I wasn't going to be happy. No. So I had to go to the very next step up and actually get the actual package. You know, I got the two bucket. Well, I got the, the two buckets. I got the carboy, you know, all that stuff. Just because I knew I was going to be satisfied with it. Why do you I've been very happy have, so far. Why do you think you wouldn't be happy with the Mr. Beer kit? Just because it was smaller or? It was just a setup. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to work everything out of one one item. This yeah. is for me for safety reasons. Yeah, yeah. But I know people have success with them. Like yeah. a buddy of mine, he made his first batch a couple of weeks ago. But he says like he's gonna probably make one. Excuse me, two or three times a year. So yeah, he's happy with something like that. Yeah, I mean, I've got two barrels that I'll use, so I can do different. Like you said, this is a small batch process that we were talking about earlier. So I can make small batches of different stuff. If I was gonna go to a five gallon or higher. Me having a small will allow me to test stuff out and say, okay, I want to scale this up. I really like this beer. Oh, yeah. And it's like one of those ones yeah. where, like, people ask me to make stuff all the time. It's like, I mean, I don't have this. Number one, I don't have the space. And number, getting the supplies is easy. I just don't have the time, you know? Yeah. Then I'm going to start tying up weekends just doing that, even though I will admit it did cross my mind. <laughs> I like to do it. I haven't, the reason I haven't done it probably in about a year or so, just because I found other places out here where I get good deals. For me to make the beer that I want to make, because I calculate it all out, like I said, because I'm usually precise in a lot of that stuff. Because even when I buy ingredients, the sheets that I track it on, I track the amount it costs for the ingredients. So for me to make the average batch for what I want to make the way I like it, it's probably about $35, $37, somewhere in that area for me to get a case of beer out. And I got a place, like I said, down here where I'm getting anywhere from twelve ninety nine to up around twenty or so a case, possibly. So for me, it became a cost thing that kind of pushed me away from brewing some. Well, that's my, now I was going to bring that up later on, but since you brought it up, I'm going to talk about it now. I look at it to where even out of a kit, even though the local place here, which is Grape and Granary, is pretty reasonable. If I if I because I looked at it when the glass batch is buying everything outright, it virtually was like four dollars difference, right? So I'm yeah. thinking to myself. Okay, once I get I get the kit, I gotta get I use liquid yeast, so that's an extra cost right there. So I'm eight dollars in the hole. Yeah. So plus the bottles, I'm in a hole fifty bucks where I can start. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not including the water, so I refuse to use city water. <laughs> I don't care if you got a filter on it or not, I'll go buy spring water. Well, usually I can use I can use spring water's not bad either. I can use our tap water. We actually got pretty good water here in Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky. But what you do is you take it and you put it in the fridge overnight and it settles it out. So you don't oh. use it right into the batch. So you let it chill in the fridge overnight. So I use like, um, I usually put like a two gallons in there the night before. And like mason jars, like four of the six oh, okay. mason jars, I'll put them in the fridge and let them uh, do that overnight. So that's how I actually have used it before. But yeah, spring water is something that a lot of people use there. But like I said, like even in like the joy of home brewing, it's like if you're, they tell you, like if you're a Budweiser or a macro type drinker, don't brew because it's going to be not cost for you. You can just go out and get a case of that. It's going to be a lot cheaper to do that than try to brew. They said unless you want to have the taste of something you've actually made, cost-wise, you're going to spend more money doing this than you would if you just go get the beer you want. Well, that's my thing. Like, me, okay, me as a reviewer, it was just a natural progression for me of doing it. You know, I'm doing it yeah. so backwards. Yeah. I really am. And I think a, I think a why lot think of it, Why do you think you're doing it backwards? This is one of those – okay. A lot of reviewers haven't brewed beer. I think you should brew beer if you're a reviewer because I think you gain something by it. When you're actually in there and you're actually touching and smelling the hops and you're actually working with the malts and the yeast and everything like that, you gain a different set of knowledge from people that don't actually do that, I think. Well, it's like my means is the direct opposite because, like, I think you should brew – I think – I thought – well, I thought you should brew first because you have a general understanding what everything is – me coming as a reviewer first, 
I got into it based on like peer pressure. People were begging me to do it. Yeah. I mean, the brewers themselves were begging me to do it for some strange reason. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know why, but it's like I just broke down one day and decided I was going to do it, you know? Yeah. yeah. And it's one of those ones to where now it's like I have – I always had the appreciation what the brewers did, but I have much more of an appreciation because at first I looked at it as like, okay, that's a profession. Now I can look at it from like what I was talking about earlier – like what my grandmother did in the kitchen when she would park me there and make me learn. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that sounds really dumb. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. <laughs> well, you pick up a lot of understanding when you're actually doing it. And I think by the time I did this channel, I had actually, I think I was brewing before I started my channel, but I think you could have went the other way. I think it's, it's fine to go. If you were talking about beer and you decide you want to get into it, I don't think there's a wrong way to really do it along those lines. I just think, when you actually do that, like you don't like you go out. Like we went out to uh, one of the uh, places there in Cincinnati. They go out and visit breweries. So last Sunday, I went out on one of their trips. They go like to three different breweries. It's like a tour. So you're on the bus. They take you everywhere. You get beer samples, all that. They asked me to come around. I just did a blog post on them. Um, me and my buddy went, and we went to one of the breweries. And like the guy was able to come over and grab some of the hops and crush them up. So people could actually smell and feel the hops and all that kind of stuff. And it's kind of like, when you're not a brewer, you don't really understand that or you don't really get that presence of it. Like, there's something with getting your hands dirty that you oh. actually pick up that kind of aspect to it that as you're reviewing it, you know, you're kind of going through a beer and in your mind, you're envisioning what these brewers had to probably do to get these flavors and these aromas together. Like when I had the Mocha IPA, it blew my mind away because I've made I made beers that were close to being a stout and I've made IPAs and I'm like, how do they get like a stout and an IPA together? Like when you smell, I don't know if you've had the Stone Mocha IPA, but when you smell it, it smells like a stout. And when you taste it, you get hit like an IPA and then your finish of it is back to being a stout again. It's like one of the weirdest things. And it's like, this is like somebody that really got in there and really got down into the science of figuring this out and putting these different flavors together. And like, how do they get all these flavors together? So it opens up a different way for you to look at things, I think. Well, I see what you're saying, like, as far as the mocha, mm -hmm. honestly, I can't I can't do chocolate. I'm definitely allergic to it, even though I snuck it in from time to time. Mm -hmm. But I understand what you're saying, because, like, I've noticed that with some porter sometimes. Yeah. Now, I'm a big porter guy saying some chocolate. So I know exactly what you're talking about as far as that. It starts one thing. It changed to another thing at the end is back to the original thing or changes something totally different. Right. Now, right. now I'm I'm I apologize for people in the chat on YouTube. Now it's um average Joe said this. As oh, far as Joe out there, Joe. What's up, Joe? Yeah, it's like he says, not saying you can't review if you, you are a newbie and ignorant to many things, but educating yourself is always a good thing. Learn a hundred plus types of hops, moths, and yeast strains. Okay. <laughs> Joe, tell Joe he needs to get a channel. <laughs> Joe, okay, talks, now, Joe talks a lot of shit. He needs a channel. <laughs> okay, now the average Joe seven sixteen. This is directed directly towards you. I am not the sharpest knife in the drawer. If you watch my reviews, you know that. But I will say this: that's a lot to take in, and they say age come with wisdom, or wisdom come with age. Depending how you look at it. But that's just a hundred hundreds big quotations is a lot, even for me, even for the even for the even for the long time brew, brew masters. So yeah. it's one of those ones to where it's always a learning experience. It really is. Me home brewing, I learned a lot, a very lot. Oh, Kit, Kit Beer Reviews is on here. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Craig? Uh, Craig is Kit Beer Reviews. He's actually over in the UK. Joe is up in Buffalo. Yeah, I see that. I see he's a big Sabres fan, according to his, according to his um, icon there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I forgot the chat was open. I totally apologize for that. I'm having a conversation, not even paying attention. <laughs> yeah, no, Craig, but, uh, Craig, oh, so go ahead. Craig just said he subbed to your channel. Oh, thank you, Craig. Now, um, now, everybody know, 
give you some news and updates as far as my channel. Um, I have another project upcoming. Now, this is my, uh, I'm going to do one more, um, I'm going to do a dual, I'm going to do a dual brew coming up in a couple of weeks. And this is assuming I don't buy the mini fridge and the ball lock keg. You know, I got to bring this up real fast. I have to go to keg. And, a lot, and not because I don't want to, because this is all has to do with space. I don't have the space to house bottles. I don't. So I, I'm forced into kegging. So it's one of those ones to where that's a whole different ball game. I know that, so I'm gonna have to learn it on the fly. But I'm pretty, I'm pretty smart enough to figure it out. Yeah. Now, um, my next project is going to be, and this was by request, and I don't know if you saw me post about this. I was asked to do a Christmas ale. That's what you sent me to take a look at. That recipe. That's a little what complex. Recipe? Yeah, the one that you sent me, you was like, you had a lot of stuff going on in that one. I mean, I mean, I know it's gonna be a lot of body and a lot of complexity, but I just think it's gonna be too busy. My That's thing is, is, if you're gonna do a Christmas ale, I believe you would actually want to be brewing that around now. And that's what I was thinking. If I'm going to do it, because, it's, going to, it's going to start next week. Yeah, because what you're going to do on that one, you're usually going to ferment that out probably about four months or so, five months, depending, um, so that it's ready around that Christmas time. So usually you're dealing with a bigger type of amount. Because usually your Christmas ales carry a higher ABV, so you're dealing with some bigger things. And just make sure you're getting the right temperature for where you need to ferment it at. Because, again, you have to watch where it doesn't get too hot or too cold. And then it keeps the yeast going and everything over that period of time. Well, that's my whole thing. It's one of those ones to where if I do it, I'm going to do two. And I don't know if you saw me post post about that on my personal Facebook Facebook page. If I do it, I'm going to do the control, back, control batch, obviously. Right. But I'm going to do a bourbon one and a sherry one. I can get the wood chips cheap. Yeah. That's not the, I'm going to get the sherry and the bourbon cheap, depending on what I decide. To you're going to lock that up for a period of time then, too. Well, if I, okay. Like, I think say, if you're doing two... Like you should have one that if you're gonna do one that's gonna be a long. I'm just saying you might want to have one that would be a short or intermediate. Otherwise, oh. if you have two long ones going, you can't make any more beer until those are done. Which is well, fine. You have to go out and buy beer, but I'm saying you might want to have something without having to go out as far with two long ones at that period of time. What I was thinking is like once I go into secondary, the secondary is gonna have to sit there, right? So I'm thinking and soon I'll do the, the bourbon and the sherry one. I can't go to bottling to the first week of November. Yeah. Yeah. Because when, once I start giving it away, it's going to be Black Friday. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to, unless I got to push it in the middle of December. Well, yeah. That's what you, I'm thinking. If you doing Black Friday, you would have had a bottle of that first week of November. Love you too, Joe, man. Love you too, man. And um, because then you want to give it like two weeks just to make sure it's fermented by the time you give it to people in the bottle. Correct, correct. And that's something I will not keg. Now, are, that's you, that's are, definitely you, are you priming in the bottle? Yes. So, right now, yes. But I was what are you doing? Are you trying to put sugar in or are you getting the actual cubes? Like, what do you mean? There's actually, my, my advice is, I think it's either Brewer's Best or the other companies, like two major companies that have them. They got the sugar already in a cube. So all you do is drop the cube in, and then you oh, like, okay. top of it. First time I was doing it for a while, I was just doing it like per bottle. So I was putting in like whatever tablespoons of sugar I needed. That's a pain in the ass. You get the cube. The cube's already set for a 12-ounce bottle. You drop it right in, put the beer in, up and down a couple times, put it away. Okay, when I'm doing it so you know, so everybody else knows, um, Grape and Granary actually sells in their kits. They actually sell – the priming sugar in a in a one pound bag. So what you got to do is, all you got to do is once you put in once you put in the secondary bucket to go to bottle, you dump it in, mix it in, and okay. bottle, and you're done. So you're doing it in the fermenter in the, in the uh, second hand thing. So you're fine then. Yeah. Sometimes people do it in the bottle, so like a bottle condition. I'm a bottle condition kind of guy, so Ooh. I usually bottle condition. That's why I was using the drops in there. But if you're doing it in the primer, you're fine. But if you get yourself some Irish moss in there, that'll clear it up, so it's not too hazy as well. Yeah, that's another different story for another different day because that's the one of the other reasons I'm going to going to kegging. <laughs> I mean, the 
I mean, be honestly, the quote unquote cloud beers I will drink. Yeah. But I wonder like where I know it's not to be cloudy. I I don't want it at all. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like I like the cloudy beers. They're fine for me. I even don't mind the yeast. It. I mean, people get like I tell I joke around. People spend good money at GNC for extra yeast. You get it for free in beers. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Oh man, now, how long have we been chatting? It's had to be over an hour. Well, it's almost nine o'clock now. Yeah, I don't even know what time you started. But you got stuff out there from Joe. Joe's type typed away. Yeah, he had been typing like crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to catch up. I'm just trying to catch up here. It's like three years to be able to tell what types of characters, certain drink ingredients. Now he has a point. Now let me read the exact quote for what um, average Joe said. He said, reviewing beers for, say, three years, I feel like you should be able to tell what types of character characteristics excuse me, you should get from certain types of ingredients. Mm -hmm. And he's right. Now, as a reviewer, I have slacked off so much that I forgot some what some stuff was. Not right. necessarily what to look for, but what, if the, but what to look for, if that makes sense. What to look for in that type of beer style you're having? You're saying Correct. right, Correct. right. Yeah, like, I mean, if you're doing it for a certain period of time, uh, Joe said about sixty-five minutes. <laughs> so if you're doing it for a certain period of time, um, you will pick up the quality. Like I, had, I had one time I had a guy asked me, I was doing a beer and I was talking about one of the uh, IPAs I was having, and it was one of the West Coast IPAs, and I said it wasn't as tropical or fruity or citrus i was used to it actually being and so he had a respond it was on untapped and he said well if you're looking for the fruitiness in the ipa you're not always going to have that in there I'm like no in an american ipa a west coast style you will have that if it's an english ipa you won't have it because that'll have more bitterness um so yeah so you know after a point what style should be in type of things um because you've done it a certain period of time it becomes pretty much muscle memory. So you remember how things are. Like, if you know what a brown ale is supposed to taste like, you know you're going to have that roastiness, that toastiness type stuff in there. You know you're going to have maybe a little bit of a burnt type sensation. You know if you're having some of the other beers that might be more of the smoked beers, like a Ross beer that's going to have a smokiness. You know, you just know certain things. Like, when you go into a pumpkin beer, you know that that's going to have a certain sensation with it. That, for me, it brings back an essence of, like, the fall or the harvest type stuff. Like, I know to expect to get certain notes out from the spices that are in there. And then get like, sometimes there'll be a cinnamon there, there'll be a nutmeg, there'll be different things that are a part of that beer. So over a period of time, yeah, that stuff becomes second nature just because it's muscle uh, reaction to it. No, no, I no, I totally agree. It's like, especially like you're looking at, especially like IPAs, for instance, you brought it up. Mm -hmm. I know like something from the UK, I know going in that's gonna be better. Yeah. That's, that, that's how they roll. Yeah. You know, like going in is like, I was trying to explain to a my, my neighbor upstairs. She it was this last it was last Sunday. She had an old speckle hen for the first time in her life yesterday, right? I know and I know that's a bad example. Yeah. She didn't realize that something from the UK was that bitter. I was like, I said, that's how they roll. Yeah. I mean, like, you go buy something off the shelf down at Acton, which is our local joker grocery chain. I mean, you're in something totally different because it's an American style. Right. I mean, so you're exactly right as far as that. Yeah, Joe brought up an interesting thing. He says, I feel like the reviewers who resonate with me personally are the ones who try to specify what they're tasting. Generic terms like it's hoppy, it's bitter, it's sweet, et cetera, just don't do it for me. I don't need someone busting out 400 different tasting notes, but if you say it's hoppy, what do you mean? Fruity, citrus, tropical, specific fruits, piney, dank, floral. So, um, yeah. You know, um, okay, I'm saying this. This is to Joe, average Joe. I'm saying this as a reviewer. Now, my reviews can be told a broad range of everything. When I drink a craft beer in general, I want the beer, and I've said this for a long time before I even started reviewing, because I've been drinking craft beer for 20 years. Yeah. Yeah, I've been doing it for a long time. 20 years? You yeah, I started like, when I was 17. Yeah. You only like 21? 
<laughs> oh, stop! <laughs> stop. Drinking it from the bottle. From the bottle! Kevin 37 is a lot of miles in the pocket. No, um, jeez. Now, now I gotta step away from. I gotta step away for for a couple minutes, but I want you to ponder this question as I step away. I gotta go get a beer here too, real quick. <laughs> now, so. my question is, um, and ponder's why I go get your beer and I go do what I gotta do. You gotta do you want your whole music while we disappear real quick? <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, number one, I got a potty, and number two, um, according to my phone, they're telling I got a message at the door from FedEx. I don't know why they're showing up so late, but it's um. No, I want you to ponder this question. Do you really think that craft beer, us as reviewers and as drinkers, and this is for the fans, and this is for the viewers out there right now, do you really think that a beer, the craft beer, should tell a story? I want you to ponder that question when we both step away. Okay. <laughs> and, we'll, All right. and we'll be right back. We'll be right back. I gotta get a beer, so don't go anywhere. I was like, you had any home music? I didn't know if you had any music. Kick a little, kick a little song. No, 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 no. All right, <laughs> right back. All right, everybody. I am back. Um, they, Rod is not back yet, so we're gonna do this. I'm right here. <sighs> hey, so much for an hour chat. Let me tell you the heck. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's one of those ones to where I, this is a good, healthy conversation. Well, this is so a chat I'm not used to because my chats usually have drama, so this is like a drama-free chat for me. It was like, <laughs> well, I'm more okay. For people who don't know, um, LTL Brewing Reviews or Lance the Lush is actually my secondary channel. I mean, politics is my thing, but I'm not even gonna go down that road tonight. I got, one, one, of them, I got one of them channels too. <laughs> <laughs> those one of those ones to where. As a reviewer, I want to. I want to learn. I want to. I want to experience. I want to not necessarily be a, a quote unquote groupie, but I got to do everything I have power to learn everything. I was laughing because Joe said drama free chats they exist. He's seen the other. He's been on the other chats where it's drama. So <laughs> yeah, he's like, not trying to avoid those chats, even though it looks as a large swap of people. Yeah, and it's one of those ones to where. I try to stay out of the brain damage. You got a few. Go deal with them on your own. Yeah. Don't bring them to anybody else. <laughs> Should get Joe in on here. If you want, I can send him the link if you like. Yeah, but um, but back to the question. I got to check. I got to catch up on the. So you do, Lance. I just mentioned. I like in reviews. Everybody's different. They just great about YouTube. There are beer tubes out there for everyone. Yes, there is. And I agree with that. Even though I might not be sub to them, I do watch them. Yeah. I do like after I do all my production on Fridays. I take Friday night and I just binge watch till like midnight. Everybody. Oh, that way you watch like all the channels and stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like it's during the weeks I, since I work, since I work three to one thirty in the morning. I can't watch a lot of stuff. Oh. So wow. Friday's my lone day after do my running around, and if Saturdays I'm working at the bar. I mean, that's eliminates. So I got Sunday. That's laundry day. My all my post stuff. So Friday night's my only night I got. Right. Yeah, I try to catch up on everybody's shows, and I'm like always like go places it seems, running around. So. Yeah. So back yeah. to the question. Now, um, 
the question I asked for the, the small break there, do you mm -hmm. think, and this is for the question for the, the viewers out there right now, do you think if you have a craft beer you never had before, do you think it should tell you a story? Now, I think it does, but go, but Rod, go ahead. I'm going to see what you say. You're saying a story as far as the beer talk for itself and everything and providing a nice whatever around it kind of thing? Or are you saying like a story like – some of you guys try to write stories on bottles and stuff, but – No, 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 not that story in just bottles. Say, just say the beer should talk for itself, right? Yeah, the beer should talk for itself. Now, if you have a backstory to the beer itself, get it? You have a you have a baseline to work from. So the beer to me personally, if I drink a beer like right now, like since I'm I, I'm drinking Natty Ice, right? There's no story to that. It's, it's garbage, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I think everybody I think everybody would agree with that. <laughs> like how however like um it serves its purpose what's needed, right? <laughs> correct, correct, correct. What I'm saying is this um if if, if I go if I get a growler or or they um or a crowler, I bring it back home, or I'm at the brew pub, and I'm drinking it. I want to talk to. Me. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what you expect from craft beer. You expect it to be able to be something along those lines, kind of situation. Like I said, you know, we talked a lot over the past few months about labels on beers, and the people are just trying to get these crazy labels so people get sucked into buying the beer. But a couple people have said, well, the beer should tell the story itself. It shouldn't be just about that label. But yeah, if you if you got a good quality beer, to me, it kind of like, it speaks to me as far as being a nice solid beer. It's like, I used to DJ back in the day in college and you would hear different music and there was certain music you would hear that would make your hair stand up on end. And you're like, okay, that's a good song. Like it's like if you listen to Aretha Franklin, like she'll make your hair stand up, you know. Oh, yeah. Or you listen to Ray Charles, or you listen to um, some other type of crooners, where you get that kind of spine tingling thing down your back. A beer that's really solid will also speak to you that kind of way too. When you get a real good beer, and you know you take that sip and you kind of look at it, and you step back and you look at it again, and you go back and take another sip, and you're like, all right, we're onto something here. You're kind of grooving into it and you're sitting into it and you actually relax into the beer you know you kind of got that good beer in your hand so yeah a good beer should speak to you oh that's my whole thing is like like when i go to certain brew pubs like here in town yeah i just if it's really really good i just veg out and people can't yeah. understand it because i'm not being conversational yeah you know you don't want to be disturbed sometimes when you got a real good beer you just want to sit there and enjoy it like there's some beers i want to sit there and enjoy with my cigar and just relax and just mellow with it, you know. And if somebody puts like jazz or something like that, you're like you're in the zone at that point. Oh yeah, and it's like I, it, with jazz music, I do that all the time. I'm drinking craft beer by myself, not doing a review. I'll be the first person to admit that. But it's um, yeah. <laughs> no, it's like I'm. If there's times I'm so vegged out. It's like I'm. I'm so enjoying the beer because can me and have me and him is having that in my head conversation. I mean, unless I was, I'm doing re research or something, I'm, I'm taking notes. But yeah. it's um, and it's like average Joe even said this: like the best beers, at least for me, are the ones that provoke discussion, even just among myself. I, I just said that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that it's just you know, it's kind of like it gets your attention, and everything. I mean, that's what beers are designed to do. For instance, you know, he before that he had referenced like. Not all need to be contemplative, you know. He made the reference that, to you saying "natty daddy," but it's what they actually do. I mean, even though it doesn't speak to me, for instance, you look at the new Heineken commercials with Benicia del Toro. That's what they're all about. Like when he's doing those new commercials, like the beer is kind of like a beer that's supposed to kind of get you in that mood and speak to you along those lines. You know, to me, it's not going to work because I, I was like, it's Heineken. It's not going to speak anything to me that's going to get me motivated by it. But that's kind of how. They drive that storyline on it. Oh, the one thing with Heineken, I mean, I'm not saying they make a bad brew. I mean, that okay, it's okay if you got it. I mean, I'll drink it at a party. Somebody hands it to me, obviously. The one thing with El Toro, it comes from the old advertising standpoint, sex sells. That's all it is. Yeah. I mean, I hate to say that, but that's what it is. Well, that's what it's always been. I mean, at least, at least with... Anheuser Busch, when the Bush family owned it, it was all about tradition and the Clydesdales. I'll give them that. They always did that. Yeah. I always respect them for that. 
now is like what you're saying, you know. <laughs> well, some states like horses too. For some... <laughs> 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 I'm just saying, it might still sell. Oh, let's, let's, let's not go there now. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Some of the rural areas, maybe. I don't know. Just saying. I've heard stories. That's all. Well, there's laws in some states. Like I said, we're not going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to thought now. <laughs> Joe says, as far as actual stories on the labels go, not for me. Stone has wasted so much ink on the labels over the years. I just want some basic information and form my opinion on the beer. With Stone and Lagunitas are both bad at that. They put this tiny print on bottles. And it's like, I'm not going to read all that stuff. It's just a waste. The thing that's worse is when these ones that do it, and they don't put anything on there for the, the date of the bottle, but they wasted all this other print on stuff. Um, you know, that's a big pet peeve for me. And it's like and a lot of reviewers I've talked to have said the same thing about that as far as dates on bottles. Yeah. I had a bottle of something a couple weeks ago that said drink. I was going to buy it. I didn't buy it, but it said drink fresh, but I couldn't find a date anywhere on it. So if you're saying drink fresh, I can't find your date. Why would I want to buy it if you don't even date the bottle to know how well, to drink fresh? Well, that's the thing. It's like you don't know when, when, when the, the store got it. You don't know when the distributor got it. You don't know when it was made. Yeah. And I the mean, store, it was a gamble. The stores, the stores keep some old stuff out there. So I'm telling you, check your dates. Oh, yeah. There's no – and there's no – and you don't know if, like, one store sold to another store, you know? <laughs> I've I ran that issue a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> like Wu-Tang says, check your bonds, check your dates. <laughs> uh, and I agree. Joe said the worst thing is watching actual beer tubers reading the entire label during their review. Sometimes it's longer than the actual review itself. Now, hold on. Now hold on there, Average Joe. But see, now, that's I, the thing. That I, I think – well, go ahead. You got it. It's your show. You got it. Okay, now here's what I will say this. I'm guilty of this. And here's the reason why. Now, when I do a review, I always say according to the official the official webpage. And I'll read exactly what it says verbatim so you know. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it, you might even go to that webpage or even drink that beer, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, he says, unless it's for a good cause, the story of the beer is irrelevant. That's what Craig says. Here's the thing. When I first started out, I used to, I, a couple times in the earlier videos, I used to do that. I'm like, you know what? Me reading a label is like me sitting in a meeting with someone reading a PowerPoint to me on a presentation. Like, I don't need you to read the PowerPoint, but I can read it myself. You could have just emailed me that. So that's why I started, like, cutting it out now. If there's something interesting on the label, I'll mention it. Like, you know, Craig said about um, good causes, like some of the places that are doing like some stuff like winter sheds or, you know, different community type things. I may mention that off the bottle, but I really read the label now unless there's something that really sticks out with it. Just because a lot of people want to can read that themselves too, or I'll put it in the description field if it's something noteworthy. Well, I see what you're saying. Like, I, I normally do – I do it as a – as a public service, just in case you could never have this beer. Right. And then there's nothing wrong with that. No. But like, I, I don't read off the, very rarely I read off the bottle of the can. I go to the official webpage, and that's why I'm in my reviews, I mm -hmm. always link the webpage in there so you can read it yourself. Make sure I'm not lying. Even though people know I'm not lying. Right. And I'll usually put stuff off their page into the description. I tell people, usually on mine, you know, I'll put it in the description so you can see all that stuff, too. It's a matter of what you prefer to do. And like I said, like, the good thing is, like, what Joe and Craig are saying here, you know, when you're putting stuff out there and you get comments back, your people that are following you will actually let you know kind of stuff, too, as well, hopefully. So, you know, they'll provide some good feedback. It's always good to ask for feedback just to see how things are going um, or what people prefer and stuff, too. But Joe said he's talking specifically to Stone and Flying Monkeys, Canadian brewery, where it honestly takes two to three minutes to read the entire thing. Yeah. But even like I said, even with Stone, Laguanitas, they always have like a big part of their label where it's just like the small stuff in print. So. No, here's a suggestion for you, Rod, and um, for, mm -hmm. for you viewers out there. It's if we're, to we're on this particular subject of putting stuff on labels or websites, mm -hmm. do you think it'd be better off to where – Still put it on the web page, obviously, but do a video talking about the story of the beer. Say that one more time. Okay, instead of like putting on, like still put it on the bottle or on the web page, 
But what I'm saying is one of the ones where if you have a story to tell about the beer itself, make a video out of it. So everybody knows. Oh, yeah. And do that separate from like the review. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm talking the brewers themselves. Not oh, the brewers themselves. Sell. Yeah, I mean, and, and some of them do. I mean, I know Lagunitas and Stone both have YouTube channels. Where they do stuff about their beers and stories about their beer and stuff. Um, I don't know how many other brewers are actually doing it out there, but you know, for the brewer, it makes sense for them to do that. I'm actually surprised. Now that we're in 2017, actually, maybe it's something with the tech or whatever. Because I do a lot of stuff on social media. I'm surprised more labels don't have a QR code just on it, and people can just put their phone on it and see it pop up. Actually, be honest with you, I remember this. I was living in Phoenix. I mm-hmm. remember in '97, '98, '99, the brewers out there used to do that. Yeah. I just don't see it anymore. Yeah, I mean it's an easy thing to do. Just put their bar reader on it, and you can actually see any information they want you to see. They can just put a thing here, go to the QR code to find out more about this beer, save that space and put all the important stuff like the date and the ABV, the IBU, all the other stuff that people want to know, the ingredients. Make it easy on yourself. That's all I'm saying. Make it easy on yourself. Make it easy. <laughs> and I understand. Oh, you can't bear abuse like, I want to stop reading the bottles because I can't read. Jeez. <laughs> well, after a point, he can't read. He just, he's, he's a lush too, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh man! Which I'm, waiting to see, I'm waiting to see his videos from. He went on a little drinking soiree this weekend, so hopefully he'll have some good videos to upload. Well, no, no, they'll be no, he'll be fine. It's one of those ones where once they start popping up, you know, I'll yeah. watch them. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to think of anything else we can talk about. It's like, I mean, the, like the comment section is is excuse me is actually. Actually, really good tonight, you know? <laughs> well, Craig and Joe are good guys, so yeah. <laughs> they, 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 used to, they used to drama on my channel, so you probably can't ask half the questions they want to ask here. So. <laughs> well, but Kent Beer Reviews, like, I watch this channel from time to time, but like, mm-hmm. I'm so backed up with work and my schedule, I just can't catch up on everything. And Kent Beer, and Craig Kent Beer Reviews, I totally apologize for that. I mean, I, I need to be a better reviewer because – and Rod, you know this. Yeah. A reviewer is only as good as their other reviewers and learn in education. Because some they might review something we never heard of before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Joe's making me laugh. He's like, I'm a good guy. First time I've ever heard that. <laughs> well, just because of the crew you hang around with, they don't always tell you that. <laughs> but I got love for you, man. I got love for you. You keep hanging out with those crazy Canadians, they'll keep tearing on you all day long. <laughs> oh, here's a good question. What is your biggest pet peeve when it comes to craft beer? This, uh, Rod, I'll let you go first. I got to think about this for a minute. Because this is actually a loaded question. Yeah. Well, the biggest pet peeve when it comes to craft beer, if it's buying the beer, is actually not really having a date on there to know when it was either packaged or what their expected expiration is. Um, if it comes to actually getting the beer at a bar or restaurant, it's people that don't know how to serve it that are actually part of the wait staff, and you have to tell them how to correctly serve craft beer and have to direct them on how to do that. Um, those are probably two of my big pet peeves, which is great because now some of the spots I go to, they already know, and they basically serve it correct, but it's kind of like bars don't put enough training into their people that are serving craft beer as well. Okay, now, now I never thought of that, but I will say this. You are correct. A lot of bars – especially when the bartender is younger, don't know how to pour a beer, period. I don't care what yeah. you're drinking. Yeah. And a lot of that is experience. Because I've, I've showed a couple of 22-year-olds how to pour a beer and do yeah. it right. And they appreciate it for me, bought me a drink. Yeah. Now, yeah. um... There's a lot now, of people don't understand they get thrown right into the fire. Oh, yeah, and it's like, they're not trained properly. Right. That's all it is. And I bartend on the side so everybody knows. So I know how to pour beer. Yeah. And pour it right. Now, another thing you brought up was labeling. Well, dating. I just want to see an either expiration date or a quote unquote born on dating. So I right. got an idea what kind of shelf life or timetable yeah. I have. Let's say, for instance, um, 
like I'm gonna use Bud Light for instance. Cause they were big and born on dating for a long time. Mm -hmm. Let's say they made a beer. Let's say the born on date was a month ago. I kind of know I got like 30 to 45 days left from the day. It's gonna be halfway decent. I know this. Right. A lot of craft brewers don't do it for reasons unknown. I've got a lot of excuses, but it's like I'm not okay. Not okay, let me back that up. Not excuses, but reasons why they don't do it. Yeah. Now, as far as pet peeves, a big pet peeve with me is this, and I don't know if you get this down in Cincinnati. When I go up to Cleveland, when I'm talking to a brewers or assistant brewers, it's arrogance. Arrogance, really? Yes, arrogance. Like they know everything, you're not really providing anything in the conversation to them when you're talking with them, or is it just? The best way to describe it is, because I haven't been up there in about a year, consistent, a year, just to, just to mosey around mm -hmm. and just explore and go out of the brew pubs. A lot of them act like theirs don't stink. Mm, yeah, yeah. And that is very heartbreaking to me. Because yeah. maybe maybe down here in Akron, all the brewmasters or even the owners are extremely accessible. Yeah, I mean they're out on the floor talking to people all the time because they want to know. Cincinnati's the same way down here too. Yeah. Not far as the arrogance or the, like the owners of brewmasters walking. Around. Everybody's out there pretty much talking with you. Like I've had great conversation with brewers and owners of the different breweries and went through different stuff. And they're like, hey, come back, check this out real quick. And I'll go in the back room and check out stuff with them. And they'll show me stuff being uh, fermented and all kinds of things. Or they'll say, you know, check this out. Tell me what you think of this type thing. And they'll give me a sample of something and I'll give them feedback on it. And they'll be like, and let them know they're right on what they want to do as well. So, oh, okay. yeah. And, and again, it is, it's, it's come from building up the relationships, I guess, with a lot of these guys, but, yeah, they should never be anybody that's that's against getting other ideas from outside are going to hurt themselves in the long run because they're missing what people may be actually talking about their product. Now, if you come in there and you slam it and you're just like, this is the worst thing ever, blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff, then they might not want to talk to you. But if you're giving constructive criticism, they should be open to it. Well, and I totally agree with that. Like, if it's bad, it's bad. I'm going to let you know. Yeah. yeah. But I'm going to tell you how, at least in my thoughts, how to improve it. Right. Or. Or what I would do is like, if they have a like a small batch, for instance, they don't know which way they want to go. I'll 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 give them some ideas. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's give them an idea which way they want to go. Yeah. Now, Craig says so. There, Craig said actually his was hype. So was Joe also agreed? You know about people saying saying stuff around beers, but they really haven't tried. They just heard good things about it. And I'm a guy, and people know that that have watched my channel enough and they're talking to I don't wait in line for beer. We've got fifty three hundred breweries. You take that and figure each brewery's put out an average of eight beers. You run the math. You, you run the numbers. There's a lot of beer out there. I'm not waiting in line for three hours for nobody. Actually, so. you know what? Like I did a video specifically on that sentence. I said five thousand breweries at eight apiece do the math. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'll go over here and I'll get a beer here or there. And I and I guarantee I will find something comparable to what you waited in line for. I went out, I got a bottle of KBS this year, an overhyped beer, in my opinion. Good beer, but overhyped. Seven ninety nine a twelve ounce bottle. I've never paid seven ninety nine for a twelve ounce bottle before, but I wanted to do it so I could do a review and actually check it out. Then, at the same time, I had the Westify Stout from Lagunese, which would per bottles be cheaper than that, and it's not that much more of a difference. You know, you could have went Westify Stout and been slightly off of what KBS made all may have offered you, but all the hype is around KBS, which is another thing. All you people hyping up KBS, same people probably bitching about Wicked Weed. Knowing that Founders is actually owned by a macro brewer now, too. So shut the F up. <laughs> I'm with you there. <laughs> I try to keep it, I kept it clean for your channel there. Like, it's <laughs> no, it's, it's actually funny you bring that up. It's like, <laughs> I have a People that are criticizing or criticizing all these other ones are still out there buying beers from other macro brewers. Don't even realize they're doing it. <laughs> That's the thing about KBS. Like, I had to take an allergy shot, had KBS. It's like, it was three years ago, right? Yeah. I just was not impressed. And yeah. I'm in the same boat as you. Yeah. I found stuff regionally that was better. Yeah. Way better. I mean, I mean, 
I can't even remember the name of the brew itself, but um, Dark Horse made one, right? Yeah. Dark Horse made great beer. Modern Marshall, Michigan, yep. Yeah, like, I thought it was way better. I thought yeah. it was way better. Yeah. And yeah. Another example, like, standing in line for beers, there's only one beer that I was standing in line for. That was one. And that is Plead to Fit. Not Plead to Fit. That is, um, that is, um, Seek the, the Bismarck. Seek the okay. Bismarck. Okay. That's the only one I've ever seen. Yeah. I think the Bismarck was the only one I ever stand in line for. Because I had it one time. I had to daisy chain the hell out of get that motherfucker. Yeah. Excuse okay. my language. <laughs> that, and the way they do it, that's one of the best beers I've ever had. That's well, like the only get, one I'll ever stand in line for. It's like we get zombie dust around here. Um, and people will stand in line for that. I just don't do it. And I've been in stores where it's like I walk around a corner. Oh, look, there's zombie dust. And there's no line. I'll grab a couple. You know, I just know there's other places that you're going to get it at some point. We have a, one of our breweries, Listerman. I went out there one day to try some beers. And I was talking to one of the uh, the bar uh, beer tenders there. And he was telling me they had a bottle release that morning. People were lined up at 6 in the morning for a bottle release they were doing. They only even open until they they open till 11. He was like, he couldn't believe people were lined up at 6 o'clock out there waiting for one of their beer releases. Which is good for the owner and the people that made the beer and stuff. But it's just like, it's crazy. And I was like, I would not wait in line. He's like, I wouldn't either. But people would just go crazy around here. They want to wait in line for that period of time. Well, it comes to one or two things. Either one, they want the next best thing. They're talking about the consumer themselves. Yeah. Or they've had it before and know how good it is. They want their place. Oh, no. Line. they even had, this, was a, this was a new, brand new thing. They even had it. Oh. They just wanted to go because of the hype. It was the hype around it. Wow. Like I couldn't a, do it. I couldn't we, do it. We had a bottle release from the same brewer a couple weeks ago because at our Cincinnati Zoo, we had this baby hippo called Fiona that was born in the zoo. I don't know if you get any coverage of their news. It's been around different parts of the country. They I made saw a beer, about that. Yeah, they made a beer named Fiona after that one just because it was Fiona and the hype around it. People were lined up to try it. Now, people say the beer is good and everything, which is fine, but I'm just saying I wouldn't wait in line for that long. I just... I'm not that kind of person. I'm like a person. If I go to a restaurant and there's three restaurants there, and one was out the door, I'm not going to that one. I just go to the other restaurant. Yeah, unless, <laughs> unless you know it's, it's a premier restaurant to go to, even yeah. then it's a stretch. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's got to be some really good cooking going on there for me to have to wait in line for. I'm just not. A, I'm not a waiting person. I guess I'm impatient, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> I got things to do, man. <laughs> <laughs> but Joseph commented out there again. <laughs> yeah, he's been a typing machine tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he said he also talked about Untapped out there. Uh, oh, like Greg has had people bragging about how many rare beers they have. Instagram is the worst for that, unless she's cute. <laughs> there are some cute ones out there. <laughs> Joe says, same goes for untapped, at least in some cases. Social media can become a dick measuring contest when it comes to the rare beers people are drinking. No, he has a point with that statement, because yeah. it is. Yeah. But the thing is, because, so this year we had the unseeding through, was it Zatterer or whatever it's called? So now, here's the thing, like Pliny the Elder used to be all this top beer out there. People say, oh, Pliny the Elder. You can only get it like if you're in two states. You're only, you're only getting that beer, right? So it got unseated by Bell's Two Hearted Ale, which is great because more people can get Bell's Two Hearted Ale, which is actually a great um, IPA as well. But, or pale, I think it's more pale ale. But anyway, I heard from people out in the West Coast that Plenty of Elder, Plenty of Younger was actually better than that. So I'm like, well, how is Plenty of the Elder being picked ahead of that? It's not even the best one in its own brewery. <laughs> I, honestly, I have no idea. Now, far people, Pliny, just heard the, people just heard the hype and they stuck with Pliny the Elder. <laughs> now, Pliny the Elder, I mean, I've had it. I mean, I thought it was okay. It's like, I mean, okay, it was, it was, it was really good, but yeah. it wouldn't knock your socks off. It really okay, wasn't. But, but friends I know out there said Pliny the Younger is actually better than Pliny the Elder. That's like a I, common thing out there. I never had the Younger, but I had the Elders. I, I, can't, I can't make a call on that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's the one thing with West Coast beers. Joe said people get angry like you're an idiot. That's that's the only Tom that yells at people, Joe. <laughs> you got a friend of Tom the beer whisperer, are you? Yeah, yeah. Tom. Oh man, proud of sometimes he yells at people standing in line. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, but before you, before you bring that, that up, like, I have nothing against people either. Like Joe said, it's their time, not mine. I just, I just saying I wouldn't do it. That's all I'm saying. I wouldn't do it. He, like, said, he, he said he's done it before and he hasn't regretted it. So, but the product isn't better because of it. So. Well, that's the thing. That's why I said what I said is like there's only one beer I would do because it's so rare and so hard to get. So hard to get. I'm willing to sit stand by sit in line, stand in line, and pay the premium for it because I might not. I might have for another five years. Right, right. I mean, I just had Bourbon County Stout like just two years ago. Because I was never one that was going to stand in line for it, but I, one of the places I used to go to and everything, they told me they were getting it in. They basically allowed me to go in and get a bottle of it. Um, Craig says he likes Heady Topper, but thinks Focal Banger is better. With both of those, they're supposed to be really good. Wait, hold on. I got to catch up here. Hold on. <laughs> but if I'm at a Trillion or a Treehouse, am I going to wait in line for it? Probably not. I mean, I wouldn't wait. I don't know. I wouldn't wait. I don't think. I don't know if they have to wait in line as much up there, or what it's like. But I would probably try to get a different beer if I was there. Okay, I understand what you're saying there. Yeah. I think Piney's built with California, Colorado, Oregon, and Philly. The problem with Piney is the younger they usually have special tappings. They don't bottle it at all. Actually, you know what? I I did notice that. Oh, I mean, okay. how the hell to get to Philly? It's, California, Colorado, Oregon, and Philly. So they're gonna just jump across the country to one city. <laughs> I mean, I've seen it in Ohio. I've, I've seen Pine here in Ohio. I picked it up, and it's like, I mean, so it's, 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 it's hell, but it's hey. Yeah. I mean, if it's Philly, when I go back to Jersey, I'll try to pick some up because I live. My mom lives outside Philly, so uh, yeah. Yeah, Philly gets some crazy distribution from the West Coast. I can't speak for Philadelphia, yeah. like here in Ohio. Like for for people who don't know this, just watching this live stream on this or this Google chat. Excuse me. I'm close enough to the Ohio, the Pennsylvania border, to where I can travel to Youngstown. I get some bootlegs if I had to. I just make the phone call. So one of the ones where I can get it if I had to. I got to I got to make a phone calls first. Yeah. Just like some place in Philly, they carry Russian River. Not now. For the record, I've heard of Russian River. I've never had it. Right. So you got to fill me in on that one. I haven't had it because we don't get it out here. But I know of it. I know they put out some pretty good beers. I mean, I I see them talk about a lot. They're like the Alchemist too. They're kind of like that big name out there too, as far as the craft beer world. Okay, that answered my question. Um. I'm trying to think what else what is going on. You didn't see any news pop up in the last couple of days, have you? Um, we were going through some silly stuff the other night, just about some lists out there. But the big thing has really been that independent label, like we talked about earlier, and then more recently the response to it by the high row or high end rather. Um, but now we're hitting a point of the year where you'll see a lot more of the probably session nails out there like everybody will go crazy for founders all day right now i'm sure because it'll be hot so <laughs> he said not the list no <laughs> that okay we were going through some different lists saturday night it was just like okay <laughs> hold on hold on hold on folks <laughs> i'm gonna go potty and we're gonna the, the, if you're talking about the bad beer list i'm gonna see what you're talking about right oh no we were talking about top 10 stuff that were being ranked out there are different things on stuff and like just a notes off the list of who was saying what about some of these beers. Okay. Um, I'm going to go potty. Now, hold on. I got something to say about that list. I did see that list a couple days ago. I got something. It is not going to be pretty. <laughs> yeah. First, I'm talking about the bad list. That's a different story, but it's about the good list. I'm going to step away for a couple of minutes and I'm going to be back. So, Rod, you have the floor. And um, <laughs> I get, I'll be I... right back. I got something to say about that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I won't do the list then, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> but the lists are good debates, right? Let's see here.
kind of weird, just one person. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, here's an interesting thing that just came out. Apparently, Big Bear, Big, Big Bear, Big Beer acquisition slow craft beer grows. Hmm. Oh, snap. Did you get like a 12 pack of Natty Daddy? Okay, I'm back. Is that a 12 pack of Natty Daddy or something? Yeah, that's a twelve pack. <laughs> hey, you know what? They had in the di they had in the discount basket for three ninety nine. So I fear, why not? You know, that's, that's probably the right price for Daddy Daddy, though. You know, I I, <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was doing it on the cheap tonight. Yeah, man, nothing but, wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that but, at all. But you know what? Though, like, I was in Walmart this morning because I go to Walmart for the. I hate going to Walmart. I, I don't. They I don't had, know. Yeah. Well, they had Rockdale Light for like I don't know if you saw the, the post I made for like four bucks, right? Yeah. And I said, you know what? Not this guy, not this lush. You know. <laughs> After that last the last year I did with Rockdale, no way. No way. <laughs> I heard a lot about Rockdale. <laughs> you know what? I don't know if you saw the post I made, but it's one of those ones to where I try to give it to one of the neighborhood drunks, right? Because I try to unload this beer, right? Because I have like four beers left. You try to do a Dr. Dave the Professor move, huh? Yeah, just, yeah, 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 I did. <laughs> I tried to put Dave Coulter on that one. And it's like one of those ones where I try to load it one of the neighborhood drunks. They were back in my apartment 15 minutes giving it back. They didn't even want it. And you know it's bad when they don't want it. <laughs> oh, I just saw one of my local breweries here. Is releasing their first canned beer, New England style IPA. Okay, oh, okay, yeah. okay. Oh, now, yeah. Okay, now before, now before I dive into whole top ten, the any IPA, I believe this is a straight gimmick, a straight gimmick. New England IPA. Yeah. Well, it just got recognized as a style a few months ago, so it's yeah, I saw it. that. But it's, yeah. I think it's a straight gimmick. I think this is this is me is my opinion. Sure. They took an IPA. They took a weak IPA, mind you. Took elements of a shandy. Oh, I hate shandies. And they added it together and called it something else. That's just my opinion. I hate shandies. That's the one style I am not a fan of. Oh, no, it's a totally. I mean, it's shandy with the carbonation. That's all it is to me. Yeah. But it's got the hoppiness of <laughs> Joe said I better go wait in line. You better wait. No, Joe, I know owners at this brewery. I'm not waiting in line. <laughs> I'm gonna tell them to hold me something back. <laughs> yeah, you make the call and, you get, and it's done <laughs> deal. <laughs> um I don't know what it is about. I just don't like shandies. Just the it's funny because I'm not a fan of shandies, but I can drink rattlers. And be all right, and they're not really that much different. It's how they're actually combined, I think, that causes a difference. Okay. But shandies themselves, like Lining Cool, Shock Top, it's just like if I have one, it becomes too sweet by the time I'm done. I will never fall with another one. <laughs> well, you get, the, you get that issue with far as sweet with some cream ales, but yeah. I understand what you're saying for as shandies. Yeah. Especially in the carbonation factor. Yeah. But it's fun. like some of the other beers on Lightning Kugel, like they do, I'll drink that aren't shandies. Um, once in a while, they got uh, like the Big Eddie. I'll drink that. Was their Russian Imperial Stout, and then their Lightning's Red is not bad, Red Ale. Um, but yeah, their shandy sells. Like, Ugh. Yeah, it's like give me a real beer to wash my mouth out with. You know, no, I, I totally understand that. But that's that I mean that's a a kitty craft craft beer to me. Yeah. I mean, I hate I, – that's a bad wording, but that's the only way I can describe it. <laughs> it's funny. One of the guys I work with, he used to always love the summer shandy, and he just moved out west where he's working. I was talking to him a couple months ago. And so you got to love it out there. You're getting your shandy seasons coming. He's like, ah. He's like, I've grown up. I don't do shandies anymore. I'm dealing with IPAs now. <laughs> well, that's the thing. is like, I guess I'm it's like, a kitty drink. Good for you. 
it's that bridge between IPAs and wine coolers, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no, but, but, it's but like wine, is, yeah, like wine coolers back in the day, Bartles and James BS, yeah. Oh, um, yeah, I see kids drinking that all the time. That Boone's Farm, things yeah. like that. But no, why did I bring a Boone's Farm in this conversation? Wow. <laughs> That brings back some memories. Oh God, when I'm 13 years old, look, I'm gonna stop that. Okay, I'm stop. I'm stop. I'm stop. <laughs> All right, back to the original subject of the top ten. You gotta wine until you do booze harm. <laughs> yeah. All right, back to the subject. <laughs> okay, the top ten. And Mad Dog 2020. Oh, that's not makes me mean, but that's a different story. But it's um, <laughs> you know, the top ten when I saw. The, the best top 10 and a bad top 10. Now, yeah. I understand that it's subjective. I understand that part. Or the best and the worst. I always said, you need to break it down into styles if you're going to do that type of list. You can't have a top 10 of everything. You have to break it down into styles. Right. And it's one of those ones to where, okay, let's, let's use a porter, for instance. You have a top 10 of Porter and the 10 worst of Porters. IPA, same thing. Even with Porter's probably a top 100 of each. Um, right. Shandy's like we just talked about, top 10 best and worst. You right. know, um, your general quote-unquote cloud beer, same thing. And I'm, I'm, I'm not the only person that thinks this way. I can't be. No, I think it's the best way to have it is to break stuff out by their style if you're going to do a list like – one of the guys brought up a point that he saw one of the people talking about, like once one beer got an award at an award show and they got like a B plus, and another one got a B plus, and they said, well, basically they're the same type of rating. No, I mean they're two different styles. They're not as great. I mean it's just in the styles they were actually in. Um, when you look at compare like a porter to an IPA to a a goza to a a, a sour to a Berlin Vice, you're 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 or Berlin Vice, you're dealing with different levels of beer. You can't compare them all the same because they're equal across the board. It's apples, oranges, grapefruits, bananas, and kumquats. You know they're all different. Yeah, <laughs> no, you're actually right. Yes, yeah, so I think you, you're better to stay in that type of style. If you're gonna do a top ten list, here's a top ten that we may have. Which and even then is a joke in itself because no one's ever actually had every beer out there. And when you have a top 10 list of something and the beer's only available in four states, I mean, unless you're one of those four states, how would you even know to rank that beer in the thing? So there should be like a, a minimum, you have to be at 25 of the 50 states to be eligible on some of these lists or something. Well, that's, that's my other thing, too, is like at least give you ha- at least give you half the country to work from. Yeah. I mean, unless you're a big-time beer trader. Yeah. Which are and, – and let's be real. It's like outside of some viewers – are very rare. Yeah. And no, Craig, that's no Joe, that's not a good deal. He's not sending me no damn shandy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like like Trillium. Everybody here that has Trillium loves a lot of the Trillium beers. But like on the list that we were talking about the other night, Trillium wasn't listed on any of them because they're not available everywhere. So it becomes a point of who has what at their exposure to actually do that, you know. But well, that's you the thing. That's the thing. Go ahead. I was saying you most almost would have to do like something where all the beers, whoever was like getting surveyed, have to have access to all the beers that were available for that survey, and then rank it out that way. Well, that's the thing. Is like I was trying to explain to a friend of mine a couple of days ago who's looking at getting getting into craft beer, and I said the the biggest blessing to me when I lived out in Phoenix and they had bed bones, mm-hmm. they can get anything you want. Yeah, and that's one of those one. Those stores were so massive, and they dealt specifically in the craft trade. I mean, I can get anything I want, so it's one of those ones where I can get it, I can ship it to you. Right. Now here on back on the East Coast, and you notice, you just can't get it. You just can't. Yeah, yeah. And it's like with these lists. Now the worst list is one thing because you can get the, most of that stuff anywhere. But it's like, um, like, like the best list. There's stuff on that list I never even had, or I didn't even have access to. Right. Without doing a trade or traveling. Yeah. 
And the worst lists are usually mostly all macros on there that are accessible for a lot of places. But also, if it's done by people that are usually craft brewers, who are they going to put in their worst list? Probably macros. And I've had some craft beers that were worse than some of the macros out there that are listed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, tell me why. Yeah. So, again, it's a matter who puts it together. But Night Joe, cheers, brother. He's, Joe's going to take off there. But good talking, as always. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's a matter of who's putting these things together, who's doing what with them. Um, and you have to take that all into account, too. So Yeah, that's one of those things, like, you brought that up, like, especially as far as the craft guys doing bad beers. I've always said, I got reviews on tape right now mm-hmm. that I wouldn't dare upload. They were so bad. Well, you can still upload them. I mean, if something's bad, you can still upload them out there. And, you know, it's just how you came across on the beer. I mean, if the beer's not good, it's like, you know, I upload stuff. It's a thing that usually what I'll do with beers like that, I try not to overly slam something because it might just be something where it doesn't work for me in that regard. So, like, before when I used to do some of the macros, I got away from saying, you know, it kind of tastes like horse piss or whatever um, to more like it just wasn't for me because there are people that do like, the macros out there but you know I, and i just got into just looking at what the beer had to offer and talking about what i got out of the beer and just say hey this is the one that i may enjoy but if you like these kind of things you know give it a shot and if you've had it before let me know am i off on something here or is there something you like about it that maybe i'm missing type thing too and because you know you put in the effort to review the beer you're not getting paid by the company so why not go ahead and still upload it and well, that's, a, that's my whole thing is like if, if the brew is bad if you watch it you folks out there watching right now, or you, Rod, is one of those ones to where if I body slam something, I'm really going to body slam something. Yeah. But I try to make an effort to tell you how to improve it. Yeah. But there's some, there's some stuff out there that was so bad, I just can't <laughs> upload it. I just well, can't do it. I, as a courtesy to my viewers. <laughs> well, like Craig says, he has some piss reviews that he's not uploaded, but I think back to one of my favorite reviewers on here is like Dean of Dean's Beer Reviews. He's over in the UK where Craig is, and Dean will do beer reviews like on his like back patio area, and if it's a bad beer, he just opens the screen door and he just throws it out. Like, no, just can't do it. You know, and it's just, it's, but it's his style now that you, you're used to it when he does that, that it's kind of like you look forward to when he does stuff like that just because He's honest and upfront about it. He's just saying, hey, this isn't a good beer or this isn't a beer I don't like. And he just – he yanks it out there, and it's great. You know, it's kind of funny. It's like he should put, like, a music soundtrack every time he does that because it's hilarious. And people respect that. Like, when people watch your channel, I think if people see you liking beer all the time, it can kind of be a turnoff because they're like, this guy is going to always say, yes, he likes this. Yes, he likes this. Yes, he likes it. But if they see – some of the beers you came to come across you don't like, and you're honest about that. I think they appreciate it a little bit more. No, no, no. I, I completely totally understand. As like, there's one of the situations to where, like, in my old apartment, I try to have the the back porch reviews, right? Yeah. And that's on how the lush talk started. That's on the back porch of this talk, and it's basically the same concept. I mean, but it's bad. It's bad. It's like the like the Rockdale review I did. I mean, I knew going in that was going to be bad. Just because the way it was set up, but it's one of those ones to where you know what I'm going to do it anyway. Try to be subjective. I just couldn't do it, you know. Yeah. yeah. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> but on a side note, away from beer, because I'm thinking about this right now, they've actually now have a Twinkie ice cream cone. No, I saw something about that yesterday. <laughs> I saw it at the store today, and yeah, it went in the cart, and yes, I will be having one later. So, okay, now, now, <laughs> folks, now for folks watching this, we're gonna fill everybody in what what that is. Yeah, well, I mean, it's uh, Hostess. I guess they started making some ice cream treats, so they taken the Twinkie and I guess crumbled it down to put it into the ice cream, and it's a Twinkie ice cream cone. And Twinkies are just Twinkies. Like, who doesn't like a Twinkie? I mean. If you watch Zombieland, that's all Woody Harrelson wants is a Twinkie. The whole movie, he's trying to get a Twinkie at the end of the world. <laughs> Which is a funny movie. <laughs> but yeah. No, I understand that. It's like, I saw that as like, how, 
how's that going to work? But now you explain that it makes sense. <laughs> well, Vegas, they got um, deep fried Twinkies out there. They do. Well, a lot of county fairs across the country does that now. I've had them. But yeah. varying degrees, they're either good or bad. There's a wide range as far as that, you know. Yeah. So you, what, what other channels did you have then? You got the political channel. Okay, here's what I have. Let me give you a break, a breakout what I have. Okay, I have, um. so everybody knows I have TRD Politics. That's my main channel. That, okay. that one is the channel I started with. Now, for the record, everybody, my views are moderate conservative, but I'm very open to a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Now my se- this is my now Lance Lush is my secondary channel. This okay. channel now for a lot of people that don't know me watching this for the first time, you know I talked about in the past. This channel actually started by accident. What happened was my very first beer review was a Bernie's beer, which is on Ford Browns quarterback Bernie Kozar. Oh yeah, Bernie. Yeah, so what happened was. I was I was in the store, and, and I saw it. I saw it on a shelf the day it dropped. So that day, I was doing my normal um, politics stuff. Like you know what, I'm gonna do a review as a one-off, right? As a gag. And I, I'm I'm sitting there producing. It's like you know what, this is easy. So I started watching reviews to get better, and that's how this channel started. Okay. And it's been going ever since. Now my next channel, let's see, here's um Dinner Tonight. And I have a lot of channels to bear with me. Okay. Now this channel, I was talking about cooking on a budget. Now I haven't done a video in a long time. Yeah. But I want to show people that might be watching on their phones or their computers. They have you can make a, a full fledged dinner. On ten to fifteen dollars, so it is possible. So you know your Aldi's or Sablots or like down where you're at Kroger's or up here Acme, you can do it. It's it's mathematically possible. Yeah. So it can be done. Now my next one is the daily quickie. As as the name implies, I do quickie videos. Now I haven't done one in a while because my sleep patterns have been bad. Yeah. Really bad. And with my schedule going back crazy again, I just can't do it. But that should be coming up again. So you're gonna have four different channels? I have another one. Hold on a minute. <laughs> okay, now the other one was a is a gag channel. Okay. <laughs> That's a drunken emulator gamer. Now, as that name implies. I'm totally shit faced when I do these videos. Yeah. And it's one of those ones where I play the classic systems full out and don't care. And you're gaming on them. Yeah, I'm gaming on them. Yeah. So like um so like um I did a video. It was Mad 95, right? Yeah. And I had so I haven't played this game in a long time and the graphics are terrible. Yeah. Given the day, but I had so much fun. I really did. <laughs> and I played it so bad because I haven't played in like 10 years. So that's what you're using your XSplit to upload it and everything, right? Yeah, but even though XSplit, I had to get XSplit to do the live stuff. Yeah. When I, when I run live. So it was one of those ones where, like, far as the Drunken Emulator Gamer, I use that exclusively because I run that one live. Okay. Or I'm pre taping, I can go back and edit. Or via Adobe, or um, that software is so good to me, I can actually plug and play what I want to do. Like tonight, I want to use XSplit, but the way it's set up, I couldn't use it. So I had to go to Google Hangouts. Okay. Which I ne- didn't necessarily want to, want to do, but I had to do it. Right. So you got five channels. Wow. Yeah, so I'm a, so on top of my regular job working the bar on call, I'm a very busy man. That's why for you, Lush fans and people tuning in for the very first time, I don't 
really schedule a lot of reviews outside on the weekends because I just don't have the time. Yeah. It's like, um, like giving a perfect example. I was with Lorraine in August through a remote, right? They're having this big beer festival up there, and I can't do it. I haven't told him this part yet. Right. Because it's the same day as the National Hamburger Festival. You got and I didn't realize this. Right. I beg your pardon? You got a National Hamburger Festival up there? Yes, August the 12th. Huh. But that beer festival with Lorraine is the same flipping day. <laughs> yeah, you're choosing and, burgers. You're choosing burgers over beer? No, 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 no. When I made my schedule in February, what I'm going to yeah. do, I already penciled that in. I already asked me to show up. And I didn't realize that at that point. Yeah. Got to start. I didn't look at a calendar. So I got stuck. I already committed to one. I'm not going to break one to go to the other. Yeah. Wow. And and, and I know they're going to be mad. They they actually want me up there. Yeah. And I, and I wish I can do both. And as a reviewer, guys, you have to understand that's how our lives work. When you get asked to do something or multiple things, you got to start making decisions, especially – when they're spread out over over long distances, and Rod, you probably had this situation at least once. Yeah, I mean, I've had stuff before where I had one I couldn't do because I had, I had to back out of it and everything. But um, I usually try to schedule around. It's like right now I think my mom's trying to come in on one day. I'm like, we'll try to move it to the next day because today she wants to come in to visit. It's the beer festival day, so. I'm going to see if she can come in on a Sunday instead of a Saturday, because Saturday I plan to be drinking at the beer festival. <laughs> okay. okay, James, I totally understand that. Yeah. I was like, oh, like, crazy, like, do you have a burger channel? No. I thought, no. About doing, I thought about doing a food type channel, like just shoot a video when I'm out eating at places, but that's nah, again. No, food yeah. channels are very time consuming. I, yeah. I thought about that. I have no desire to do one. Well, not cooking, just like taking video of food or something and then going in and like eating it or whatever. No, that's what I mean. It's like, I mean, but maybe not, but, but now I got like the YouTube app. It's easy on the phone. No, I thought of that. This is too, too time consuming. Yeah. I got to combine, com, to, that combine of reviews of food and beer is like, yeah. There, there are people out there that already do that, and it's like I don't want to do it. Yeah, see, I got the I got the political channel, which I only do like once in a while here and there. But usually, I'll upload videos from online and put them on there, just some different stuff that's happening. Because I found a great app that I can that I can do that with. So I can just take the link and put it on there, and it'll save it over to YouTube for me. Just upload it. People can go watch the videos of stuff taking place, and occasionally we'll do like commentary on things. But then I got the video game channel that I do, and then just the beer channel. You know what? The politics and I and I know this is a I know this is a beer channel, but it's like I'm gonna talk about this for a couple of minutes. You know, I really don't want to, but it's one of those situations to where I've been doing politics in some way, shape, or form since 1997. Mm -hmm. And like in the last few months, I was just so burnt out of it. And so I had to take a break. Right. And it's because it's so taxing. Yeah. There's all the research I have to do. Then I have to do pre production. I got to, especially now since I'm typing everything out, I'm usually using a tablet as a teleprompter. It just takes a long time, especially with the post I do. I mean, my flip time. From if I hit record to upload being uploaded, mm -hmm. it's thirty hours. Oh wow! And that's a long, long time. And well, you're I, trying to do a lot of more technical stuff on yours, though. Yeah, because all the graphics I use and the backgrounds I use. Yeah, and, and I, I still got to mix all the beer reviews in that. Yeah. So I'm doing multiple things at once. So it's like it just takes way too long, and I'm burnt out. Now, I plan on doing one next week. I'll make an announcement about that eventually if I decide to do it. But it's like just burnout. The other channels, expect, especially this channel, yeah, I so enjoy so much. It's so relaxing. It's so easy. 
Yeah. And it's, I mean, do I have a name like a lot of other people? Of course not. Like, like the last year I did, I, I don't know if it's a troll or not, jumped on me about that. One of your review? About what? He's like, well, you only have 100, uh, basically 100 subs. I have 300. And one of those deals is like, I enjoy what I do. It's like everybody starts up. That's just a guy being an ass, probably. And it's one of those ones where, like, I'm also spread across multiple platforms. Yeah. So it's one of those ones where, I mean, it's not a money maker for me. Actually, it's a money loser for me. No. When I look at it, bottom doing, line. Yeah, yeah, you're doing it for the fun of it right now. Yeah, it's, it's the love. And the, for me, it's the love yeah. and the passion. Yeah. And the interaction. Because I never had this before. So it's one of those ones where I get to talk to a lot of people I normally wouldn't talk talk to. Like the perfect example when Strat was alive. Right. I never would have met him otherwise if I didn't do the reviews. He contacted me first. Right. And it's one of those ones where up to his death, I love talking to him on the side. Oh yeah. Strat's a good guy. I mean, it's one of those ones where and they're doing a whole he, brew thing this Saturday with memory of them. Oh, are they? I didn't know that. Yeah, different brew, different YouTubers. If you check out Drunken One, he's doing it, and there was someone else. I have to find out for him. But yeah, a few of the YouTubers will be doing the thing, and you can pop in and do stuff and everything. But they're gonna oh. try to run. They're gonna try to run hangouts and stuff too. Oh, okay, I got to yeah. look into that. Yeah. Yeah, I did a farewell video when he had died or whatever. Like from we, we used to talk all the time too. I did a video and instead of what I did my I gave a farewell to, to his on my channel, but instead of me doing like a video dedicated to him, I pretty much just played one of his last videos on the tour. Actually, actually, no, that's how I found you originally. Yeah. You had posted something about that. I wouldn't watch. Yeah. That's how I subbed to you. Yeah, so I was like, you're spitting that. For me to actually not do something on me, but to play a video that he had done, you know, before he died. Yeah, and in all honesty, I wish I did something like that out of respect. Yeah. Because the conversation we had, and he actually really started, he was the person that actually really started nudging me to homebrew. Yeah. He's a good guy. I mean, he was involved with, anybody that's talked to him can tell you how involved he was and stuff. I mean... And I think he had been battling illness for a little bit of time, but it seemed like it was out of nowhere, but I think he had been sick for a little bit. Well, that's the thing is, like, I, I, I had my suspicions, just yeah. just the tone the tone, and the tenor of the conversation, but yeah. out of respect, I would not ask unless he volunteered the first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's like one of those ones where it's like, oh, we, I don't want to say this. I really don't want to say this, but from a reviewer's side only, mm -hmm. and and before anybody jumps on me, understand something: the way I want to serve this up here in the United States. If you don't live here. People of color, I'm going to use this term, and I, I hate using this term as the best way to describe it. Don't know about craft beer or they're keeping it extremely quiet. Now, with that being said, looking at all the reviewers, and there's quite a few, there's a few of us out there. Yeah. Why aren't there more? Now, before you answer that question, <laughs> you answer that well, question? No, you, but wait, there's more. <laughs> now, me and um, now, now, Brewmaster Alex Rodriguez up in Cleveland, me was talking about this about three months ago. Now he's from Puerto Rico. And we and we had a conversation about this. Yeah, a lot of it's education. Yeah. Now. Do you think it's the same thing? Is it a cultural thing? Is it like, is like, is this not out there? 
Is it well, marketing? Is it a cavalcade to everything? Well, I went in. I went in on Thrill List last year about a piece they have written out there saying almost the same thing, and I pretty much said, um, "Who told you that?" Because there are black people in craft beer, although you may not know of them. I told them we may have just not invited you to the party. So, you know, um, like for instance, uh, Walmart. You mentioned earlier. They got a deal with a Harlem black brewer last year that people didn't know about that she started getting her stuff put into Walmarts. Um, there's some down south that are brewing. There's some that are out reviewing. I mean, on Facebook, I'm part of a group that is uh, black craft beer lovers. Um, the guy I mentioned up in Toledo, Chris, that runs Black Frog, he's black. I mean, there's black people out there, but just because you don't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It's kind of like just because – we may not be out where you you're at. Doesn't mean we're not out at different other spots too. So, well, that's my thing. Is like I hate to cut you off, but it's like there's a like a lot of the breweries I go to that know yeah. me very well. They yeah. ask me that question: Why yeah. aren't you out there? Yeah, I mean down here, I see a lot of black people drinking craft beer. I see a lot of Latino people drinking craft beer. In fact, when I was interviewed a few months ago for one of the podcasts, it was for Cold Brew Podcast. They interviewed me. Um, they're out of Arizona and California, and they're both Latino. And we talked about that there as well because they were saying they didn't see as much either. I said, you know, just like we don't see as much of Latinos out there, we're out there too. You know, you're the Beer King, he's Latino, he's on YouTube doing stuff. Um, we're in a smaller number, but that's like anything in the country. I mean, black people are only 13% of the U.S. anyway. Um, Latinos, I think, are might be like 15 or 16 or 17% or whatever. Um, so we're going to be in a smaller fraction because we don't make up as many of the people. But at the same point, we're out there doing stuff. It's just I don't think it's displayed as much or things along those lines. I mean, anytime I go into a bar that serves craft beer, I'm not the only one there. Put it that way. There's other people that are there just like me. No, 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 no. no I totally understand that. And I see that, too. But it's like it's a hidden thing. Like a perfect example. And this is probably a bad example. Open Bottle Society. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know you probably watched their videos. Even though a lot of people don't like their setup. But me and Key is always talked. And he pretty much said the same thing. I've never seen Open Bottle. They are a very different setup. They're out of Vegas. Okay. But they're very vulgar. I mean, they're they're totally tuned to a, to a younger crowd. Okay. But me as a tweener, yeah. I understand what they're trying to do. That's why I talk to them all the time. Right. Or, or try to talk to them all the time. Let me phrase that. But it's one of those ones to where I see it to where I'm trying to I'm trying to phrase this right. You see this, but it's one of those ones to where there's a market there. Now you're gonna get the you're gonna get the old line. And this is what I'm talking about across the board, far as far as the cultural setup in this country. Mm -hmm. They're gonna, they're gonna drink their cheap beer. You're never gonna touch them. They're right. never gonna change. They're, they're in their ways. They'll tell you that up front. I respect that. Right. But I'm talking about the 35 or younger crowd. Like like a perfect example. I wanted to make an African style beer. Right, and I know it's gonna be very difficult. It's gonna be a gra it's gonna be a grassy beer, which is you don't you never see in this country. Well, I mean, Chris at Black Frog, he made a sweet potato beer up there in Toledo, and the people loved it. And he actually his majority of base wasn't black; his majority white base, and they all he went through it pretty quickly. So I think a lot of times when people say limitations, we put limitations on ourselves. No, no, I totally understand that. If it's a good, if it's a good beer, no matter what it is, people will drink it. I mean, if it's like a freaking soy sauce beer, if it's good, people will drink it. Um, well, the one thing with Chris, because because his his group was out in Savannah. Um, I mean, you you're gonna have to travel to either Detroit, Dayton, or 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 Detroit. You know, so Dayton is not necessarily a dead zone, but you got to travel. You know, it's an hour. It's pretty much an hour and a half away in any direction. Yeah, this is one of those weird situations. 
even though I have never had any of his brews, mm-hmm. but I want to have one with him canning. Yeah, he I'm just started canning, so yeah. I'm hoping to get a distribution deal. So if anything, I can get something here without me traveling there. Yeah. And I told myself, if he doesn't do it, I got to go out there. I got to. Yeah. Yeah, because we talked a couple times, and it's a matter of me trying to get up to that part of the state or whatever. Because I actually had friends from down here, a family. They go on a family trip. Whenever they go out of town, they ask me where they should go and if I know any breweries there. And they went up to Toledo, and I told them about Chris. They went over to Chris. They loved all his beers. Um, they went to Michigan. I sent them over to breweries in Michigan. They loved all the beers there, too. So um, that's an opportunity, too, Like if you were planning like beer trips for people. But that's a whole different idea. Um, but, no, there's a market out there for that type of guidance or education. Um, but there's a market for that in any type of group either because a lot of people, no matter what their background is, that don't really fully know craft beer as well too. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Is like, like, for example, on this particular subject, it's like, um, oh, oh, good grief. I can't name that freaking chain now. I want to say BJ's. That's not right. It's um, not BJ's Wholesale? No, 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 no. It's – um. Or BJ's beer, like the beer chain. Yeah, the beer chain. Like, they, they, they beer in a restaurant. Yeah, we got BJ's here. Like, um, their brewmaster. The brewmaster is a person of color, you know. Yeah. I mean, I I, I read what he said. And it's like, I mean, he's an unknown, but that's a national chain. So I I kind of understand why that happens. Right. Because it's a national chain is like, people ask me all the time. Like I said earlier, why don't I do it? I mean, there's people that do it, but part of it, like I said, part of it's going to be economics. So as far as income in the country, a majority of black people, I'd say a good amount of Latino people as well. And um, I don't know if any of the other groups like ACEs are affected, but depending on what the opportunities are, income can be more limited for them. That's just the way the country has been set up. So craft beer is not cheap by any means. I mean, there's... People that you know said, "Oh, you you know I've got some proof." Oh, you must have some money. You got that beer, blah blah blah. And it's like, no, it's, I mean, it's just a beer. I'm fortunate. I mean, I've got a good job and all that kind of stuff. But I went to college to be able to have a good job. But at the same point, some people you know can't afford to go out there and spend you know seven ninety nine or ten ninety nine on a bomber when they got other concerns or other needs and stuff. So depending on your economic position that's going to affect it too. And there's more probably people of color that are affected more along those lines. Although there's a good amount of white people that are affected the same thing too. So. No, I totally agree with that, that particular yeah. statement. It's like when I, like when I decided to do review school time, I knew that I had to allocate money Yeah. for that. I mean, like perfect example. Like I look at, I look at clown shoes last week. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to drop 16 bucks for an unknown, you know, right. people that does. Right. I mean, I, I, mean mentioned, I mentioned that Stone Mocha IPI. I picked that up uh, last week. A six pack, sixteen ninety nine. Which to me doesn't seem to be too much for a good beer. You're getting six of them. When you think about how much you would spend if you went out and you were drinking them individually, right? So, but to some people, they're like, that's like two cases of you know Natty Daddy or whatever it may be that. Yeah. They'd rather get that or they have to afford to get that, you know, for them to only get six bottles of the other one, you know, it's one of those things. People make those choices or people are limited by those choices, not being able to do it. So I think that has an impact in it too. But I know, like I said, when I, when I responded to the thrill list article, there are a lot of people that are also out there doing it too, but it's just not advertised about it. I mean, there's bars out there that are basically, like some of the clubs, like black bars, and they have a ton of craft beer there, and people are drinking the craft beer when they go out that night. And I noticed that too, like like yeah. here in town. Yeah. Like um, like people don't know, like Akron, Ohio. Mm-hmm. I would at first say Copley Road is is central for that, right? Right. And there's a and there's quite a few jazz clubs up there, yeah. and they serve that, and I yeah. see them in there all the time. And they drink it. Yeah. And a lot of them told me that they don't. They don't want to. They don't want to tell people that they drink it, and I don't know why. And I yeah. should ask that question, but it's one of those ones where I honestly believe, and maybe this is me. Yeah. 
that this is an untapped market. Yeah. But there's a show idea for you, too. You could probably go out and just take some video asking people questions about if they do or don't drink half beer. If so, you know, do a lot of people know about it or if not, you know, why don't they do it? However, you want to ask questions. You put together a little video, do a little study on it. Well, that's what the thing is like the people I've talked to about this particular subject. Yeah. They're hard liquor guys. Yeah. They're hard liquor people, you know? And yeah. I understand that. Like, far as the beer crowd is. It's an older crowd, unless you get like that, that niche I was talking about. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. I'm like, I'm just, I'm just trying to think of best wording for this. So <laughs> those, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say political, politically correct, but trying to be real at the same time. Yeah. If that makes sense. So it's one of those ones to where it's not necessarily a pet peeve, but a concern. So I, I'll figure something out. Yeah. I'm, uh, how how long have you how long have you been rolling on this? I have no idea. I know Craig said it's three a.m. where he's at in the UK, but he's still up watching. <laughs> but Craig has twenty hours, so I don't know when he sleeps really. Okay, it's three a.m. there. Um, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. So he's three. Say so if he's in the U. He's in the UK or is he in uh? He's gotta be in the UK. UK. There's see. He's five eight, hours ahead of us. And so your Eastern time's got to be five hours ahead of us. Yeah. So, see, it's 10 o'clock now. So, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. Okay, it's 3 o'clock here. Okay, I'm going to step away one more time, and I'm going to ask one more question. Because I have three questions I want to ask. Okay. And we're going to wrap this up because, like, I'm, I'm not trying to get anybody in trouble or am I totally sleep over. So, give me a couple minutes. I'll be right back. I'm going to get a beer, actually. All right, fair enough. All right, folks, we are back. Um, Rod is not back at the moment. He's getting he's getting a adult beverage. Um, give me some updates in the meantime. Now, next week, I'm not totally sure I'm going to do a review. And the reason why I say that is because I don't know with this doctor's appointment on Friday what's going to happen. Well, next Friday, excuse me, what's going to happen. Well, no, excuse me, this Friday, what's going to happen. Because I got some medical stuff going on, and not talked about that periodically, especially with the ulcers. So it's one of those ones to where I got to make sure before I do it. That's one thing, and we got some other stuff going on too with interviews, remotes, things like that. So we know. So Rod is back. I am back. So as we as we roll in the three hours. As we proceed. Yes. Yeah, so now, before we begin, what are what are you drinking right now? Uh, this is another one of these 72 Imperial Stouts from Breckenridge Chocolate Cream Stout. Oh, okay. Yeah. Diamond in the back, sun rooftop, digging in the scene with the gasoline. You know what I'm talking about, son. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just wish I could do chocolate. That's the yeah. old thing. <laughs> I don't want to drop. How do you pour, what porters you pick up chocolate too, though? Well, the one thing with porters, I got to be really picky. Yeah. Because a lot of people don't notice about chocolate. I can't do the coke itself, 
but I can do the oil out of it because it's okay. white chocolate. So I got to be very, very picky what I pick, or I got to take the pills or do the shot or said review. Man, that would drive me crazy. I can have like the chocolate. I, if I had to watch it, I don't have any food allergies. Except broccoli makes you throw up for whatever reason, but that's more of a gag reflex, I think. But I can imagine if I had to practice, that would drive me crazy. Well, that's, I got to be extremely careful when I when I do a when I decide to review. Like yeah. there's a couple of reviews I for, totally forgot about it. So when I start going to the web page, I start looking what's in it. I'm right. like, oh crap! I gotta pull my stuff out. At least, if anything, take the shot. You know. Right. The so, last thing I want to be dead on the floor, and nobody can get a hold of me. You know. So how long have you had it? Like where this has been a thing? Like ever since you were like born, I guess, or no, no. Like I used to eat chocolate all the time. I I loved watching McCall's when I was a kid. Okay. And what happened? And I'll tell you exactly what happened. I was I was nineteen. Oh, uh, not nineteen. I was fifteen. I, I had a Hershey's bar. I started to break out, couldn't figure out what it was, right? No yeah. one could. So I thought it was this one-off thing. I waited a couple of weeks, had a ner- another Hershey Hershey's bar. Went to a straight seizure. Right. Oh, wow. So I, I spent a month in the hospital trying, trying to figure out what it was. So I gave them a timeline. So I, they ran a simple test and told me exactly what it was. Could it just been because it was a Hershey's bar, though? No, as a test, I I went to Malley's Chocolate, which is the big chocolate retailer from Northeast Ohio. They are okay. the, it is the premier chocolate place up here, right? They use top shelf stuff, so I bought an ounce of chocolate. Wouldn't the right. shakes really bad? Oh wow! I went to the doctor, and that's exactly what they told me, and I've been I've been with that ever since. Yeah. Even though I will I will admit. I can sneak a Reese's cup about once or twice a year. <laughs> right. <laughs> so everybody got to try to sneak in the Reese's. <laughs> oh, yeah. And like when they come in the white chocolate Reese's, I was in heaven. Even though know, you know, they only come up right around Easter. And I, had a bu- yeah. I buy a bulk. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, <Right. laughs> but the back thing about porters, porters, I got to be really careful because of that reason. Um, a lot of po- uh, porters. I mean, if I know they don't have chocolate in it, I will, I will drink it. And I'm a porter guy. Yeah. I really am. Even though this time of year I don't drink them because of seasonal reasons. Right. Um, but a good, a really good porter I haven't tried yet, I haven't had in a while. I haven't. I really haven't. Because porters, a lot of people aren't really drinking them anymore. They aren't. Well, stout is just a big porter, really. Well, no, I understand that, but like a true yeah. blue porter. But a true porter, people aren't drinking as much. Um, well, I think they still like the like the uh, Avalanche porter. I think people still do. A lot of restaurants still have that on there. Um, I think that's the one from uh, is that Breckenridge too? The Avalanche they have, I think. I don't know uh, what I. Like I usually prefer I usually prefer stouts to porters though, because I like a bigger beer. And then that's totally fair. Like porters, I mean, I grew up with. That's little, what I know. They're a little that, thin for me. Yeah. I beg your pardon? Porter's a little more thin and watery, I detect with those. For what I lose. Like, they're a little more too thin. Uh, the, 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 I think it depends on the porter because um, I've had some really heavy porters. It was almost a stout. Now, you can get some imperial porters. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, that's true. But it's like a porter is like, like last night. It's a perfect example. I posted a picture on Facebook about me cooking steak. Yeah. Honestly, I really wanted a porter because that goes very well with that. Because the way I set it up, because I had a steak, a potato, a vegetable, is one of those ones where it goes really well with that. Right. But like off the shelf, somebody wanted to buy it. You're not looking at that, especially this time of year. Yeah. But it's one of those ones where I want to. Oh, let me back that up. Outside the. The Northeast IPAs. What do you think the next trending thing is going to be? And I'm not talking about malt cider because I saw that article. The malt ciders. <laughs> yeah. As I'm, I'm thinking myself, no, just no. You're saying outside of the New England, like the New England IPAs, you're saying? Yeah. 
the Lex, it is, the Lex it is. brand. Well, they already started. They already started with the, like the pale weed owls, which I like. So I'm not a huge weed owl person by itself, but now they're making hobbier with the pale weed owls. Um, sours are already rolling. Whether it's sours or the Berlin or vices are coming back now a lot more. The goes the gozes are coming back a lot more. So sours definitely out there. Um. I don't know. I think you're looking at certain flavor and maybe in some of the type of beers. Um, but then it's like, what hasn't really been flavored yet? Kind of. We've what? got we've got some of the peanut butter ones already out there. I have seen a push towards the white stouts. Um, now I have couple, a question couple, about couple, couple companies. That, I haven't had any yet, but a couple companies have released those. Now I have a question about that. So you brought that up. Yeah. I actually looked about making one. Yeah. White stout. It looked complicated the way it's set up, but right. it seems like relatively easy in general. Now the white stouts or white IPAs. Is that a? Do you really think that's gonna be a trend here coming up? Well, the white IPAs they've been doing for a while already. Um, not to a full amount of people doing it, but they are doing those because there's like a white Raja from the brew kettle they do, um, a couple other spots. But the white styles are relatively newer. I've only seen a couple companies have those out. It's a little bit different. I don't know what the taste is like on them now. I see a lot of people headed into a lot more barreling um that we're headed into down the fall or winter months i think that's going to be bigger i think we're going to see more wine barreling um we've had we've had some success with that like shorts brewed out of michigan their soft parade was a nice crossover beer for people that drink wine to go to beer and they use wine barrels for that i've seen other companies using wine barrels out there as well we also have seen whiskey companies and some of the wine looking to use craft barrels now too. So it's kind of this mixing of things taking place across the line. But I think we're going to see more barreling taking place because people are really getting into that taste of the vanilla and stuff with a lot of the bourbon flavors. You're seeing that pop up a lot more in a lot of different things. And like I said, if I'd be surprised if we don't see more white stouts by the time we roll around right here in the winter. Cause that's when they'll come out more because that'll be like the colder season. I'll want the heavier beer at that point. Um, what I like to see is a decrease of pumpkin. We talked about that earlier, like it's cut back on some of that stuff. Um, but yeah, what, what are you thinking? We're going to see. No, here's what I think. This, this is a straight theory. Now I do see the whites coming, the white IPAs or white stouts coming out. Okay. I do see that. But I think that's more of a, I think that's maybe a, a more of an arc of three to five years, as far as that. Now I here's what I do think. I see a lot, and this is what we're gonna get talked about. Mm -hmm. Is the Canadian IPA. Canadian IPA. It what's don't. Gonna, what's gonna make that one different? It's the brewing process. Have you had a Canadian IPA? No, but I got one on a trade that hopefully, if it gets through customs, I can get it. But it's I um. I don't know if they're that much more different though than what we do. No, because their growing yeah, season is different. Okay. So, so the hops are gonna be different. So it's one of the ones where the taste is gonna be different. At least, I'm, at least in theory. Right. I see that. I see a lot of the. Excuse me. I see a lot of the um. I see a lot more of the South American brews show, starting to show up. The yeah, Latin flavor. They're buying more. Uh, we had um up not too far from you. Well, I say not too far from you. It's a little bit of a drive over Great Lakes. They came out with their Grandes Lagos, and that was a Mexican inspired lager. Yeah, I so, I saw, yeah. but I have not had that yet because. So I have a big thing. I have a big issue with Great Lakes, but it's one of those ones to where I saw it on the shelf. I knew what they're trying to do. It, so I haven't had it yet. 
Yeah, it wasn't my I say cup of tea, but really mug of beer, I guess you could say. Um, it's okay, but it's kind of like it's got a hibiscus in it, so it's got a nice floral to it. But it was like, eh, I don't want to say it's more. I hate to say it's like more lady type beer or whatever, but it's kind of like I put that more to like the shandy type category type thing. It's kind of like a refreshing type beer. I had a six pack. I finished it, but it was kind of like, you know, if I'm sitting on a beach somewhere or poolside, I guess it'd be okay to do that. But it's not like something I would want to hunt down and keep as a regular part of my rotation. And maybe a limer of lime would help, but I have no idea if I never had it, you know? Well, my philosophy is if you have the fruit of beer, then you're, you know, that's not really a beer. <laughs> no, no, fair enough. Fair enough. I know a lot of people the same way. But I'm, and the people say, well, what about like Blue Moon? I'm like, trust me, I've had good uh, beers like that from across the ocean. They don't have to fruit them. Yeah. <laughs> I've had yeah, that Blue Moon being a, crowd, being a cloud beer is like, yeah. I know people like it, but like, this is not my cup of tea, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, but like another thing I see, and this don't get talked about, and this is not part of those arc I'm ta- arcs I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. I see a lot of the Japanese and Chinese beers showing up. Yeah, they go. They have a lot of stuff happening in Japan. I had a buddy that just came back from over there, and he talked about a lot of the stuff that was happening over there. And I can definitely see some of the Chinese type stuff, which would be interesting. I mean, you're going to get more probably rice type beer with some of their stuff. Um, but it'd be interesting to see what they had to offer. Occasionally, I'll drink Japanese beer, like when we're out for sushi or something, or at a Japanese restaurant, I'll drink Ichiban, or, or I'm sorry, yeah, uh, uh, was it, is it Kirchen, Ichiban? Yeah. yeah or, it was Ichiban, uh, yeah. Or, or Sapporo, or one of their, their things. I like, actually, when I go to some of the Indian restaurants, drinking some of the different beers from some of the countries like Turkey or India, and they've got some unique type beers, too, that I like to try. So... It's kind of fun going to some of the international restaurants because they usually will have beer that has flavor from that part of the region as well. Well, that's the, that's the thing, like especially with the Japanese beers, the yeah. Japanese culture is so precise in what they do. They're going to be on point one hundred percent all the time. Yeah, and that's why it's going to be with them. It's going to be so complex, especially with, if it's talking about rice beer. Yeah, and a lot of people understand this that. You're you're gonna actually have to sit down. When I people buy one of theirs, it's gonna take me probably an hour to figure it out, just to figure it out. Well, it depends, talk about it, it. It depends how crafty I guess they get because if it's something like, for me at least, when I have like a Sapporo or Ichiban, it's not that much more different than me drinking a Bud or something along those lines. But if they get more stuff going with the craft beer, that'll be interesting. Um, one thing that we will see more here, where we're both in Ohio pretty much, is that with them lifting the caps, a lot of the brewers are targeting higher ABVs on stuff now. Yeah, I was going to so ask we're you about that. So we're going to see a lot of that. I know down here, like Mad Tree and Ryan Geis and a few other brewers are already targeting bigger beers to release. So now we're going to start seeing a lot more heavier weighted type beers. And we'll probably see more of the bourbon type stuff there. But now you're going to have you know, think about like in New York where they have Evil Twin and they have the Molotov cocktail, which is like 14 or 15 percent ABV. Um, you think about some of these big stouts and stuff they would have for special events for festivals that they can come to to, um, to market now and be available. You're going to start seeing a lot more higher ABV type things happening. But that's the thing is like like here in Ohio, like folks who are watching this in the replay don't notice like when they raise the cap. Now, what's the cap now? Was it 21 percent? Uh, 25. 25%. Like, yeah. here, like, like you can, I mean, you can get Dark Horse here in Ohio, right? Like, I'll give yeah. an example. I'll use Plea the Fifth. That's 18%. That's a very boozy beer, especially if you're not careful. I made a mistake when I did a review. I, I dropped two back-to-back, and I was on the ground the moment I stood, the moment I stood up. So you're not, you're not used to it. You're not going to get that. But it's like, I don't want to get in a situation to where – it gets so boozy, the booze is more important to the beer. That makes sense? And I think Rod 
I think Rod got dropped. Uh oh. Let me see here. Show in broadcast. Oh, Rod, what happened there? Hold on, hold on. I got no sound. Hold on. Oh, uh, let's see here. Oh, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Show in broadcast. Present to everyone. I don't know why I still got. I still don't have sound. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Now? Okay. Now can you hear me? See, I can hear you now. Can you see me? I, want to get I the, can see you. Why am I presenting to everyone? I didn't want that. Yeah, freaking Google messed up again. So that's why I disappear there. Once, once in a while, Google will do something stupid. And then you're knocked off from everything. No, I understand that. I had the same. I don't have a problem with Google. I have a problem with Time Warner up here. But I've got a thing here. Why does it say I'm presenting to everybody? I'm not trying to present to everybody. Cut off. <laughs> Is it present? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! What is going on? Go away! Can you hear me, Lance? Mm -hmm. Is it just me on the screen? No, I can hear you. Well, my thing is saying I'm presenting to everybody. I don't know why it's doing that, though. I can see you. And, like I can see myself, so I'm good on my end at least. Okay. Well, no. Uh, but it's telling me I'm presenting it. Let me see. So I can just click anything down here. It says I'm presenting. So participants. Okay. Maybe it was just something screwed up on my computer screen. Then anyway, I'm back. So you can see me now. So we're good to go. Um, forgot we were talking about there before Google messed up. But you were saying you were saying something there. You were saying um, what you were just saying before I lost my screen. Okay, what was I saying? I was saying um, oh oh snap! It's um, I was talking about the Japanese beers. Yeah, yeah. Then I was saying it's one of those ones where oh man, I'm trying to think now. It's um. They're so precise in what they do. Right. They're gonna be so on point. I I just honestly think they're gonna be people gonna be blown away. Yeah, I haven't had anything really besides the two that I mentioned from over there. Um, because even at our Japanese restaurants here, what they usually serve will be those two, and then they have macros. Occasionally, a couple of the craft beers as well. Um, but yeah, if, it's, if it opens up in the market, it'd be nice to see what they have to offer too. No, I totally agree. Um, and it's one of those ones where I'm trying to think here. They had a long delay. It's um, Japan, China. You know, I think South Korea, maybe. India is a huge market as right. far as that. You know, I don't you know, I'm not very familiar with with their um beer set. Right. Really not. But I see that a huge mark huge market here. Yeah. Yeah, India has a huge marketplace for it. In fact, um I don't know if I don't think it's changed as of yet, but Arbor Brewing out of Ann Arbor, Michigan, they were the only craft brewer set up in India. Oh, no kid! I did not know that. Yeah, so they do a lot of stuff over there. In fact, Arbor Brewing just sold the location they have here to another brewer out of Michigan to keep it local. Um, but they still have the other operation in India, I believe. I know the owner of that company, too. But they're pretty big. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I did not know that. You meet a lot of the craft guys, and you really get a chance to talk to a lot of them. And it's like a, it's really like a great welcome to circle. You really can meet a lot of good people, and everybody's pretty much. I know you said the couple of the places you've been at where it's kind of an arrogant thing, but the majority of them, it's like a nice community to be a part of. You find a lot of good stuff. I mean, that's a, that's the whole thing. Right back to what I said earlier about the how they want to be. Not sort of neighborhood bar, right? But be semi regional. That makes sense. Yeah. They want to be big enough to where they're local. They want to be in their neighborhood. They want to have reach. Right. Right. I mean, because like I said, because what well, they got to be careful of, dependent on the size of them, is to not push too far, where it ends up hurting them. So they have to grow at the right pace for sure. But I think like with me is like people ask me, do I want to open a brew pub? And I said, you know what? Maybe down the road, but I'm I'm at least three years, right? Yeah. Because I want the experience behind me. But yeah. it's like I don't want something big, like like Ryan Guys, for instance. I want some I don't I do not want something big like that. Yeah. Unless it happens naturally. I want to have that corner pub that people come in. I'm a destination station. Yeah. Yeah, we have a place here. It's a Brew River Gastro Pub, and they do a pretty good thing. Um, they don't brew any beer really there. I think they have maybe one of the local brewer that might make something under their name for the pub, but um, they get a good amount of craft beers, but they're a restaurant and all that kind of stuff. They do some pretty good things. People come down here, listen to music, drink some good beers, all that kind of stuff. But that's a tough part of the business too, doing like the restaurant business. Um, I have people that ask me if I was about brewing and stuff like that and everything. It's like, yeah, I don't know if I would want to do that part of the operation. Now, if it's handling like distribution or sales or something along those lines, then that's something more of a fit or a PR or marketing type thing. Um, but you know, it's for that brewing part of it. I like it, but I don't know if I want to have to put it because I know how much the brewers go through. I don't know if I want to have that much time dedicated to actually brewing it, but I would love to grow it. <laughs> no, 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 that's totally understandable. It's like, especially with the restaurant, yeah, it's one of those ones to where the only way this is in my head, so keep this in mind mm -hmm. the only way I can do it is a diner setup. Mm. No, meaning is like. I have to keep it's the same complex, but the diner is separate. Right. So I don't have to deal with it. I have a general manager on that side doing all of that. I have to concentrate on the beer and the marking of that. Right. I mean it sounds it sounds really weird, but I excuse me, I can't I can't think of any breweries in the country that does it that way. I can't. Right. I really, really can't. So, like, that's, I mean, a diner size, a pipe dream. Heck, I even say that um, me going, me going, at least local, is big time. Right. Because I look at how much it costs us to start it up. It's actually, the state of Ohio, for, for you people watching this on the replay, is actually relatively cheap compared to other states. Yeah. I just don't know if I want to do it. Well, it's a, I mean, it's a, it's a commitment for sure. So that's one of the things you have to go with feet first. You can't really go halfway in. So but, that's, things, that's things like I figured the me to pull this off without the restaurant is going to cost me $10,000. Well, you can, and have, that's on the cheap. Well, you can have food trucks. Though. That's what a lot of our guys do down here. And that's what I would do is like, Without the restaurant, it's like, I got to have that extra income coming in. Yeah. When I'm not open or like somebody just wants the food. Well, if you did a, if you did like a revenue share agreement with like a food truck or something to give them a location or whatever, and you were taking a percentage of what they sold, that might be an opportunity too. And you wouldn't have to worry about doing the food part of it. There's I different know. opportunities for stuff like that. I mean, I, one day the brewer I met, the owner of one of the breweries a couple of weeks ago, he left the job being a chemical or mechanical engineer. I can't remember which one it was, but 
to start a brewery. You know, he just felt like that's what he wanted to do. I mean, he loves what he's doing. He's like, I could have stayed the other thing, been an engineer and had a pretty decent life, of course. But, you know, he felt that was called out to him to do the brewery thing. Is he making as much as he was doing a brewer? No, but he's is he happier? Yeah, he's pretty fulfilled doing it. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it's not the money. It's just feeding it. And if you've got something you love that much, it can bring other people into it, possibly, if you're doing everything. If he puts the care into it that's needed and he's able to do it. Now, he was able to probably make a nice little cushion being an engineer before he made the jump. Yeah. But yeah, he's an he said, yeah, and he got a loan from one of the banks or whatever when he invested in making the brewery and stuff, but he jumped into it. I met, you know, people that do that. I mean, they just feel that they want to do it and they go for it. And it's kind of like, you look at anybody that's kind of succeeded as an entrepreneur and a lot of them, te- you'll see a lot of times in their story where somebody took a risk somewhere, you know, that's things like, like as a YouTuber, for forget the beer for a minute as a youtuber it takes time commitment passion and a lot of dumb luck yeah we can we can and it's like who the world's knocking my door at 10 35 at night what the world's going on <laughs> oh it's probably one of the one of the ladies in the night trying to milk a smoke off me <laughs> uh, that's, the one, that's the one thing living in the inner city you know you get that all the time but um no but it's like this is one of those ones to where what is chat in general i wanted to have this chat and i i honestly wish that more people showed up to this one but granted, it's a holiday weekend, pretty much. And yeah. a Monday night is so tough for so many people. Well, on a holiday weekend, with the weather, depending on where they're at, they're probably out drinking, too. Or doing stuff with family, if not drinking. Well, that's the whole thing. It's like, like, with me, it's like, I don't talk to my family for the most part, but it's one of those ones where I go on downtown to the Rip Fest. Yeah. But everybody's getting sick down there, but I decided not to go down there. That's why I decided today to go out to the brew pubs. But the problem was, of the three the three brew pubs I went to, I forgot two of them were closed on Mondays. Right. And the third one had water problems with the city. So it was one of those ones where you couldn't open anyway. Right. So I got stuck doing – I didn't get stuck doing this even though I wanted to do this. But I want to do it tomorrow. Right, right. For the people that, that wasn't going to go out and watch fireworks or anything. Yeah. So I, I totally understand. Um, is this one? Oh, God, I'm repeating myself. It's one of those ones to where I and Rod, I, I totally appreciate you being with me. This is one of those ones I had to do because this is one of those chats that right. needed to be done. Because not not for myself, but for the people looking in. Right. No, it was pretty cool. It was fun to definitely do it for sure. And that's one of those ones to where it's, to where it is like I want to get back I really really do and it's hold on. and I want to get a lot of stuff on my chest in a public form and there's a lot more stuff I want to talk about but looking I mean it's almost 1040 so it's one of those ones where I don't want to tie somebody up for hours and hours and hours because I have a lot to ask and talk about. I really <laughs> do. Right. And from a and I plan and so you know down the road I plan on um doing a a live video of just talking about brewing. Yeah. Because I have a lot of ideas 
Right. But they execute them is a different story. Yeah. Especially the way I'm set up. Because I already know I got to figure out a way to do partial mashing, if anything else. Yeah. Well, if you set it up, then let me know. And a couple of the guys I know that a brew can probably join, and they can probably give you some pointers, too. But I just don't want to get the situation to where... Or this Saturday, when they do Strat, a lot of the brewers will be doing stuff on things. It'll be good trying to catch up with some of the guys to ask questions. But the thing is, like, I got to I gotta catch the replay of that. So oh, yeah, like, that's right, yeah. Because of my scheduling. I want to watch it live, but it's not It's not going to happen. Yeah. But it's like, um, this is my setup. It's like, I got, if anything else, I got a partial mash. Number one, for myself. Num- for, for a fact, I can do it. Number two, I like I said earlier, I got to get off the extracts. I got to. Even though extracts is good in the right situation. Yeah. So um so enough talking about myself. Um you know what? I didn't ask or I didn't why didn't request. What is your channel about? My channel? What which yes. one? My beer channel? Yes. Well my beer channel, I do um most of the time it's beer reviews, although I'm messing with different things on there. But it's usually like I do beer reviews and then talk about other beer type related stuff. Um, usually the Thursday nights are kind of the wild card night because we do a live hangout. So occasionally we'll talk beer topics, but that can go anywhere. Sometimes we end up in politics. Sometimes we end up in religion. It just depends on who's on there. That's usually a train wreck show, but um, – and that's the one that's kind of the NC-17 one every Thursday night. But the other ones are kind of just reviews. I started messing around with one that people have liked. I haven't done it in the, since last week. Um, I have one that I do that's called the Minute Beer Buzz. And it's a, basically it's under a minute, and it's a tidbit about some information about beer. So the first few episodes I've done on that have been a certain hop. So like I did one on the Warrior Hop. I did one on the Saz Hop. And I pretty much bullet pointed how the hop can be used and what the hop is and kind of share some details. And people seem to like them. I just haven't gotten back to doing one of those yet. But it's real quick. It's like I said, under a minute, you just bullet point with the things about it. I'm going to do that with some of the hops, malts, and also some of the yeast type things. Or it might be a minute beer buzz about something that just happened in the news, like a quick alert or something. But it's finding time to get those. I like doing those. Those are easy. I just pretty much just do a mic recording of it and usually just put up images of something like with the hops, I put up images of the different hop and everything and just laid it out there like that. So I didn't have to be like on camera doing stuff. I just need to, I need to get the schedule working the way I needed to get it working. Like I said, but work in itself is the day job, right? That pays the bills. So this is usually the after hobby type things. Um, I'm going to be doing more stuff with the channel, although I just haven't done it yet but I'll be doing interviews with certain brewer representatives at some point. I did one last year with Chris for Black Frog, which went really well. Um, but I've talked to guys at Lagunitas that were interested in doing it. I've talked to other brewers from other companies I've met with that are interested in doing it. Um, so I'm going to set something up with them at some point, do like a live hangout like we're doing, but it'll be with one of the breweries. Okay. Um, and we're going to kind of do – so I'm going to start getting into that kind of stuff on there. Um, maybe some of the local beer businesses, like uh, one of that tour I told you, that was Craft Connection Tour here in Cincinnati. I may hook up with them and do like a show where they can talk about their business on there. So I'll ask questions along those lines and allow them to position themselves so I can get like people that are doing different things along those lines so they can get the word out about their stuff. So it's still a work in progress, but anything on that channel is just really beer related type things for the most part and then just having fun with it. Okay, good, good, good. Like I'm, I'm trying to get myself to that point also, but it's I'm just a long time away. So yeah. it's um, so I understand exactly where you're going, and I'm trying to go in that direction. But it's um, got to be things you're interested in too. Like I said, so I started that channel back March of 2015, I believe. So it's just two and a half years old, and I kind of started getting down the game plan of what I wanted to really like this year. 
So it's kind of it's kind of worked for itself. I had to work through all the initial hiccups and everything. And when I, you look at like I say, you go back, you look at my first reviews to the reviews I do now, you can see a difference on there. So it was kind of like I had to get it down, cut the way I wanted to get it cut, say what I wanted to say, get rid of some of the other stuff. Pretty much get back into the format of when, like I said, I used to be a radio DJ in college and get it cut down into those type of, you know, when you wait to talk quick bullet point type ways, quick things over a period of time, because, you know, we really had a certain amount of time to really hit on those type of things. And at first getting back into the groove, it just wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. But now I've pretty much gotten back to where I wanted to do and get it going the right way. Okay, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Um, like I said, like, I'm trying to get the same point. It's like, even though, like, from the business side, I'm a very nuts and bolts guy. Mm -hmm. So if I start doing those videos, they're going to be very, very dry and boring. <laughs> yeah, you got you to gotta have, you gotta be in a way to try to spice it up a little bit. And See, for me, I have to be careful on what I do on some of these channels because I actually work in, like, the financial sector. So, you know, it's kind of like I can't get too over. Like, I see some YouTube videos where people are going crazy, doing all kinds of stuff. I really can't do that because that could affect, you know, what I do in a day for people to take me seriously. You know, I deal with a lot of people that, you know, we look at people investing, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars and stuff in the investments and stuff. So I have to be careful in that regard. So I try to keep it down that way. But at the same point, the thing that helps me is, like, I used to basically – train people on right brain thinking for a period of time so i can draw imagery when i'm doing some of the reviews stuff so i kind of tap into that kind of things to try to give them an image of the picture i'm painting and keep it interesting enough that they'll watch the video so okay fair enough fair enough fair enough i told you somebody coming from there it's like my videos or my channel excuse me is trying to be where you're at right now yeah. I mean, yeah, it's numbers, but it's one of those ones where I love what I do. So for all you people watching this at the end of this video, got to understand that. I, why well, I'm being hesitant, I'm passionate what I do. Yeah. And that, that will never end. So keep that in mind. Yeah. But, um, and when you're passionate, it comes through on things. So people pick that up too. There's certain beer reviewers I watch more than some others because they do have that passion that comes through. Oh yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But you know what? Like, um, it's ten forty seven right now. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna shut this down. We've been talking for a while. Yeah. A long while. <laughs> I mean, like, this is one of those unusual, super long form videos. Right. So, we talk cavalcade a lot of stuff. So, it's one of those ones where, Lush fans, I apologize for the length, but there's a lot of stuff I wanted to talk about. And there's a lot of stuff I didn't talk about because this was a, because this was turns to a, a multi part series it really would have yeah and I, plus fans i apologize for that yeah so good, um good so, wait. so um lush fans i'm gonna get off here and um i think i think uh rod for joining me of rod j's beer reviews now understand something. Go to his go to his page, watch his videos. Because if anything else, I will say, you know what? Go watch him and say, you know what? I like him, I don't like him. I've always been like that. I mean, his reviews are very, very good. It's like go watch him. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey, you're very, very welcome. Yeah. Now they um I was like, if they go to YouTube, it's Rod J Beer Ventures, or they can go to the website, which is rodjbeerventures.com. Oh, yeah, you beat me to that. I was, get, I was oh, getting I was getting there. <laughs> I told you about the patience thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 
<laughs> Sometimes I get ahead of myself. <laughs> but oh jeez. But I'm I'll, I'll tell you what, guys. I'm gonna sign off for this for this um Google Hangout. I wanna thank you. Thank you, thank you for watching. Be careful to remember fear the root, like I always say in my sign off. But stay tuned for next edition of Lance Lush. <laughs>